See you guys. Ah, uh, some of you guys checked out the new Tomb Kings follower video. Thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, it's not, um, I don't know, maybe it wasn't quite as exciting or up to the same standard as some of my other videos, but I just, yeah, there's a few, a few races that I wanted to do followers videos for, and I just sort of haven't gotten around to it. So yeah, I wanted to, just wanted to get another one done. Um, I probably still have a couple more that I wanted to get done as well, but yeah, I don't know. See if we have time before Women 3 comes out. But yeah, that one's like, it's, I don't know. I'm not sure if there's like a huge demand for it or any or anything, but it's just like I've already got the four and I already had four other videos for other races, so I just want to get another one done for the Tomb Kings as well. Um, yeah, so we've got another um, another blog post today with um, another uh, with the Wood Elves starting positions. Uh, only day we can stay in the stream for the whole time. Yeah, you made it right at the start, Jesus. You can be here for the whole thing. Um, so yeah, it's Wood Elves. Did anyone uh, move? This is a Twilight. Still look like they're about the same position. Agrilon and um, Orion, both in the same start position. Drikers, same start position. Um, yeah, okay. So Wood Elves look to be just starting in exactly the same places that they were starting in Mortal Empires. But of course, now it's, you know, in a bigger map. So that's cool. I'm not sure if there's much really to talk about with the Wood Elves start positions. Just, yeah, just pretty much as expected. What's next, Vampire Coast? <coughs> Excuse me. Hey, Inventor. Hey, Andrew Jones. Welcome, welcome. Nothing changed them? No, that's right. Morning, Lalo. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I didn't, um, uh, I don't know. I stayed, I stayed up too late trying to make that video, and then, yeah, I tried to get a bit of sleep, but I couldn't really, couldn't really get sleep, so. Yeah, I might have to make it a bit of a short stream tonight. I'll just, uh, just play for a little bit and then I might have to go back to bed before uh, trying to get some rest before work. Um, yeah, maybe I should put that back there. Don't want to catch cold. So yeah, tomorrow we've got um tomorrow we've got the excuse me, vampire pirates. Um vampire pirates start positions. Um I don't know how much of that's gonna be different. Um Noctilus is still gonna start in Galleon's graveyard. Um Vampire Coast will be the same. Um I don't know. Well, Celestra could be anywhere, I suppose, because she doesn't really exist in the law. So they could move Celestra, but I don't know if there was like a particular part of the story about her traveling from Bretonia to Lustria or something um, that needs to make her need to be over there. Um, yeah. Hmm, don't know. Oh, well, anyway, yeah. So I don't think there's much to do with, much to say about the start positions today. Um, is there any other news? I'll just have a quick check of the official forums.
Mm. No, no, nothing too. Uh... Nothing jumping out as me. So yeah, maybe there is no new news for today. Well, if anyone else has um, seen any other news, then yell out. But I think that's about it for today. Just uh, just the wood elf start positions, which are basically just the same as the old start positions. So nothing to see here. You started a new uh, Tomb Kings campaign today. Oh, that's good, Plug Monkey. Yeah, I um, I've been uh, really enjoying this uh, Tomb Kings campaign. Can recommend. Um, do we want to fight this battle or it's, I mean, a decisive victory? Low. I mean, I guess it's probably easiest just to auto resolve it. To war for really damage. Let the living live. That was just her attacking us over the intern. Yeah, you're still sleepy. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely still sleepy. I don't want to fight. I don't want to fight any battles when I first wake up. Otherwise, it could be disastrous. Disastrous. Never. Oh, that's right. I was gonna. So I took Al Haik off the blue uh, Thegans Errantry. I think they're called the uh, blue Bretonians. Uh, and then I decided to send a couple armies up here to Valiant deal with these guys. These guys are technically not at war with us currently. So we've got magic, we've got some artillery, we don't have much in the way of archers. Find my harem. Hmm. Awake. Find my harem. Hmm. I deign to move. Ambush the foolish. I deign to move. Stride to greatness. All shall perish. Valiant mm, Lord. They look pretty weak, but I don't know. Just play. I might just play. I mean, My glory. yeah. I could like it, try and take him on with one army, but I think it'd be hard. Whereas if we just wait a second, then we can um, get in there and take it out easily with two. Declare war and then bait and ambush. Oh, yeah. We could declare war and then bait and ambush them out, but I was thinking what I'll do is I'll just um I'll just siege with one army and then attack this uh, army with the other one so that they split apart. Um hopefully that one will move out of range of the main settlement. The ultimate shrine. Okay, Bell uh, we um actually disbanded um what do you call it? We um uh, abandoned Bell Ali Bell Aliad last turn so that we could retake it with the neck protect this turn. So we'll do that. This will make it pop up immediately in tier three. So that was good. Black Terror of Arcan tier four. Oh we got tier four now. Um but we need to move back over there with like um got to move back over there with our um, followers, all of our followers, so that we can get the free buildings. Now, I might just pay full price for those ones. Get them going. Oh, that's right, we're taking a knowledgeable death race just for just for something to do. Damn. 
probably want to keep uh, farming for a better trait. See if we can get like Scorpion Carver or Sphinx Carver or something. What you ask is impossible. Priest King of Greatest Dynasty. Is it worth, um... Actually using this guy? Don't really particularly have to use him. Mercara rises from the sands! I suppose we should push down and kill, um, your king, slaves. push down and kill Ark in the black, right? My lady will not allow it. Bow before your king. My I will not forsake my honor. We wait for now. Land of the dead. Um, how much does it cost? 4,800. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it, yeah, so it's, it takes like, it'll take like a bunch of turns to get over there. Oh, yeah. I mean, it won't take that many turns, I guess. Maybe I should just wait until we. Who commissions me? We wait for now. I'm living. I must consider. from the sands. Uh, maybe I'll fight this one. Just uh, it should be fairly sedate, a fairly sedate affair. Be nice to just uh, just get into the battle map for a while. On a nice easy, you know, nice easy basis. Nothing too challenging. But yeah, I'm. Um, yeah, thanks a lot for everyone who's um, been giving me advice and tips and tricks and stuff to uh, get into the Tomb Kings. I feel like this is um, definitely my most successful Tomb Kings run so far. Took it very slow and steady at the start, but it seems to be starting to gather some momentum now. Um, although it could all just completely go to hell again, you know, immediately after this. But, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really into it. I kind of want to play Ark in the Black now. Yeah, I think Ark in the Black seems like they are the next most interesting after Cetra. If I could impart any Tomb King knowledge on you, the pointy end goes forward. Indeed, the pointy end of the spear towards the enemy. Makes sense. Oh yeah, that's one uh, one thing I wanted to do. Um, science badge for when? I don't know if you get a science badge for pointy end towards goes towards the enemy. 
Seems to be a little bit more, uh, probably a little bit more sophisticated than that. Bring my chariot. Although that was pretty awesome advice. But yeah, I've got a, there's like a, um, got a responsibility to keep the, keep the science badges, um, worthy. Uh, yeah, it's probably getting a bit too close, really, aren't we? Yeah, let's just go over the walls. Bum rush this shit. My orders enacted. Onward, Legions. Oh, this one's got the artillery bug. Oh no, there it goes. So to get to the right spot. Basket artillery thing is a fun unit. I agree. Oh man, these guys are getting wrecked. Why are these guys getting wrecked so much? They've got arm um, regeneration, so they should kind of. Yeah, work here is done. Well, these guys got really punished in the show how they got wrecked so much, but um, maybe I got shot by artillery. Maybe I shot myself in the back with the artillery. But apart from that, everybody else did alright.
I can tell that you have a huge monitor, so much so that when you want to look at the corner of the screen, you have to move your head to do so. <laughs> hey, Ellie Rizzo. Uh, my monitor is not that huge. It's just, I don't know, it's regular size. It's that big. That big. I don't know if I'm in frame. But yeah, it's, it's regular size. It's not like huge, huge. But like when I'm looking at the camera, I'm looking just to the right of my monitor. Like I have, I have the I have the camera on my second monitor. So my main, if I'm looking like this, I'm looking directly in the center of my main monitor. That's the bottom left. That's bottom right, etc. Like that's looking at the corners of my monitor like that. Yeah, I have two monitors. Yeah. So what I, what do you see? I'm commonly doing is I'm looking from chat to game to chat to game, or sometimes I'm looking at stream stats to chat to game <laughs> that would be what it would be who are you more hyped for nagash or chaos dwarfs chaos dwarfs 100 percent. i don't even know anything about nagash really um i've never read anything about nagash i only know about nagash like second through secondary sources you know from like people telling me about nagash um i want to keep this going so we can keep sacking um keep farming for the um for the trait so I guess we'll just sack it. He's a dead guy, so I've heard. I've heard that as well. Nagash was weak, says that monkey. <laughs> Indeed. Is that a va that's a vampire code that counts quote, isn't it? Is that um the Manfred that says that? Nagash was weak. Sounds like the sort of thing he would say. We're here fifty two percent. So we should be able to enter in camp stands. We pop this guy up. And this guy is not able to enter in camp stance. Uh, what can he do? He can enter ambush stance, I guess. Gonna enter something. Attend your king, slaves. Legions, move! Ambush the foolish. Um, yeah, so I want to go for a bit of a um, chariot theme for today's episode. So we've already got the um, we've already got the chariot of gods for uh, Cetra, and I would like to get some combat stats on him, but our priority is to oh, we got a public order plus two all provinces. That's actually not bad, is it? Might take that. Um, yeah, so I want to go for a bit of a chariot theme. So I think the Necrotex already got the chariot unlocked, but I'm currently, he's currently not on it. But that's okay. Um, then we've got Tomb Prince. Put him on a chariot. And give him whatever we can give him to make him a little bit tankier. Get more hit points. And we'll put this guy on the chariot. I cannot. Get another four percent hit points. This guy also on the chariot. Alright, so I'm looking forward to when we have an open field battle and we just have all of our heroes like cruising around on chariots just tearing everything up. See how that works. The realm of hey, non Graham. And let's see, how do you cheese? Bones. How do you cheese faction wide bonuses? I try to disband lords and keep the bonuses, but it doesn't seem to work. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong. Um, hey, non Graham. I'm not sure what you what faction wide bonuses do you mean? Um, like, Attend your king, yeah. What, like, can you give me an example of a bonus that you're trying to use and what's you know that's not working? We give um no we can't give the priests chariots that's right we can um go for German jars though how many how many princes have we got we've got five fin princes so we've got three here one two three one there and there's one there okay so yeah. I wouldn't mind getting like all five of them in the one thing, so we have six six guys on badass chariots. Pretty good. 
And I don't know if I should just fight the bullet and just pay for the pay the four uh, five k to get this up. Mm, ah, you don't need to. Is um, I'll just double check that repulse is definitely before I decide. You strength rate ninety one. Ninety one. Strength rate ninety one doesn't seem that low. Does that mean she's still got an army floating around somewhere? Hmm. Nehekara rises from the sands. Stride to greatness. Prepare to march. Moves. Hmm. I'm a bit worried this guy's going to get ganked here, but. Oh well, it is what it is. I aim it, Prince King of Greatest Dynasty. Ninety-one. That's not noob, noob level army power. Yeah, I don't expect it to be anything too powerful. But I mean, we've only got a pretty noob army here. The only thing we've got is um, archers and yeah, and a basic doom prince. So we're not going to be, you know, it's not going to take too much to threaten us. Um, are these storm riders any good? We got eighty armor. Hmm. Yeah, if we could get a if we could get a caster in there, I don't know if this death caster is going to do much, but um, might be able to help a little bit. Oh yeah, I guess we want to sort of try and set up some trade as well. We maybe we should send a um, how much um great power penalty have we got? Great power ten. Great power five. Great power five. Yes, yeah, so that's all right. So we've got like great power five or ten with most factions, but we've got plus forty relations because of um of plus the forty. Oh, rises from the sands. that's interesting. So we got plus forty due to tolerance, but then if we look at like how to proceed, valiant lord. These guys, they've only got the plus twenty tolerance. Like that. You are not him. Is it time? Maybe is the tolerance and the like um anti what's the opposite of tolerance? I know some people have that trait that means they've got like minus twenty or whatever. Um is that like on a state the same scale? So maybe these factions that had like minus twenty before and now they've got plus forty, so it ends up being plus twenty, you know. Plus 20 um, tolerance, even though it was actually like minus 20 tolerance to start with. That might be what's going on. No, hopefully we're going to get hit with anything too rough. Um, hey, Legend Merc. What do you make of Volkmar's super, cha super change in Immortal Empires? Um, have we seen... Um have we seen Volkmar's? When are, when are we going to get to see Volkmar's actual like um, details of his faction? Like all we know is that he's going to he's going after the books of Nagash now. Is that what you mean? Like how he's he's going after the books of Nagash now instead of going after instead of getting the Empire mechanics? Um, yeah, I think it's like cool. Fine. All right, let's keep cast ship trying to uh, recruit here and see if we can get a better one. Um, we don't want to keep this. Oh, well, oh shit! Okay, this is pretty serious. I just realized that if we attack these guys, that we're going to have these other two armies to deal with, and they're going to, you know, ransack our buildings and stuff. Hmm. 
What you ask is impossible. The trap calls. Fire! Arise, my legions! Right! Sack it! I alone shall restore Nehekara. Do you remember we just leave them there? Or that'll be alright. This one will have to do. We are lost. Yeah, also Manfred, really intriguing. Yeah, for sure. I think it'd be really exciting to see um see that new mechanic with them too. With both Manfred and Voltmar going after the books of Nagash. It's kind of cool because it makes it like a bit of a um another bit of a three-way thing kind of like how you've got Belligar, Skarsnik and and um Quick um that are all going after Karak Eight Peaks you know um and now you're gonna have um yeah Volkmar Volkmar all of the Tomb Kings and uh Manfred all going after the Books in the Gash I wonder if it'll be a bit of a there'll be any sort of competitive element with the different factions like racing for the books or anything or if they'll change it in any way like that or if it'll just be that you know they all just separately can go after them you know okay so Remove Citra up here. Where are we now? Are we in Al Haik? We're in Al Haik, right. So Al Haik should have free buildings now. Oh, we don't have any infrastructure to build there anyway. Um, then if we move into Bel Aliad, it's there. Now we should be able to get free buildings ish. 1920. Oh, this is pretty good. It's half price. Less than half price, so that's fine. Leads to be free, yeah. Public order. Probably don't need the public order, I guess. Rebels won't take Kofa. Uh, no, it looks fine at the moment. Good call, though. Sometimes if you keep sacking something, the Rebels come and destroy it, and that uh, ruins everything. So, yeah, no, that seems fine. Where is this? But do you know whether I should put this guy into encamp stance to, like, fix the... Sentinel. Try and fix up the army, or whether we should just... Um, go into, like, ambush stance in case there's, you know, baddies nearby. got some magic now um, he's only a death mage though so he's not particularly useful do we reckon that do you know who I am I kind of I kind of think Cetra could take out both these armies at once raid for XP now nah, I want to get I want to just replenish up this army a little bit They're a little bit damaged but I mean I could raid for XP that yeah I mean that would be Probably a good idea, but Legions rise. We'll just uh keep farming traits as well. We can get a trustworthy. Pretty good. So what up? Yeah, I don't think I replaced him this time. To your king. Maybe I did. Is a 
Did you lose Camry or is it a map coloring bug? No, we got Camry. Camry's over here. Um, Camry should be fairly safe because we've got friendly beastmen here. We've got um, friendly Numas here. We've got friendly um, Dune Kingdoms here. And we've got, well, not super friendly, but neutral ish Sudenberg here. Why is Sudenberg so aggro on me? Your entourage suggests you are important. Zombie. Oh, okay. They don't like the fact that we're against the Chevaliers. Um, maybe break defensive alliance with the Chevaliers. No. That would be good if they broke it. Should I go after any of these other, um... Oh, you have capacity plus two for a shop to you. That's pretty good. What was that site with the disciples info again? What disciples? You mean the followers? It's in the, it's in the, um... If you click on that link to the video and then go in the description for that one, that's, it's in the description. And also in the comments. Almost enough jars for the army to the right. Ah, uh, this one. Um, yeah, we could start unlocking those, and that would um, that would like save us capacity. But I don't know. Actually, do I have an extra army at the moment? Oh yeah, I can just get another army as well. Right, should have been doing that earlier. Uh, Alright, we're going to level 3. Yeah. You take the Black Pyramid? No, I didn't take the Black Pyramid. Um, I assumed that that was sort of like an end game thing. I hadn't even really thought about it. I mean, somebody was telling me you can actually raid, you can just put your armies to raiding in the Black Pyramid and make really good money from it because it's, um, I guess it's like a built up tier 5 settlement and stuff. Um, yeah, so this is my, my, my A team army, right? Um, I should be able to take on these guys, right? They don't have any artillery, they don't have any archers, it shouldn't be too bad. Chivalry demand, I hear you. All right, I might join war Gravy's prospectors. Onward. So that we don't pull in the other um, Bretonian infection. My long beards grumble, so make it quick. It is advice for new action. Find my heart. Yeah, just make sure these guys are ready to go. Yeah, I'm pretty confident they can take out over there, so... All right. All right, so we'll... Instead of declaring war directly, we'll join war against them so that we don't pull their, um... Don't pull our allies into the war as well. Yeah, I might make these guys happy as well. All right, now we're at war. Oh, fuck you. Fool. Destroy them. They both ran away. That sucks. This is my endeavor. I was hoping to kill them. I thought that with two armies they might fight up for a fight, but no. Nah. Yet. I'm not interested. Shapti Carver? Mm, we don't want a Shapti Carver, do we? We want Sphinx Carver or um, Sphinx Carver or uh, Scorpion Carver, I guess. What of the heat? Hey, Adrian. Did you mean the specific to? I mean the general site with the followers' stats and how you can obtain them. Yeah, go into the Tomb Kings video that I've linked in that I've linked in the chat. 
and then there's a then there's a link in the description there that takes you to the guide it's a got a guide for every it's every faction By the gods. not just tomb kings tomb prince on skeletal chariot oh yeah all right well those other guys ran away but these guys didn't so that's good. Submit to your king. Siege that. Attack and destroy. And then we'll use our use that as a poor man's lightning strike to uh, to bite and conquer. Now this guy outside won't be able to get reinforcements from inside the settlement. So even though we don't have fought lightning strike, we can double team him that way. Legions move. And now he's out of range to reinforce the city. So that is perfect. Um, Scorpion or Sphinx Carver? Yeah, it's probably, yeah. Uh, somebody else was telling me off for taking a sharp to before. <laughs> um, what was that other question that I missed? There was something I was supposed to be talking about. Was it a non Graham that asked? Oh, heroes. Yeah, yeah. If you disband a hero, then the heroes are gone. It's only the lords. Yeah, so if a lord's got a, tra if a lord has a global trait that you want or whatever, then you can um, disband the Lord and you'll still continue to have that global trait um, affecting your faction. But if your hero has a trait and you disband them, the hero just is dead. They cease to exist and so it doesn't really work. Um, unless you get like immortal heroes and then you get them like wounded in battle or something, but there's no point doing that. It doesn't help. Um, yeah, sorry, Anon. Yes, looks like somebody else uh, answered it in the... Yeah, thanks Shane for helping out with that one. Um, answered that one for us. Do followers still work while the Lord is disbanded if they give some kind of bonus? Yeah, they do. Yeah, the followers still work on the Lord even if they're disbanded. It depends what it is. If it's like, yeah, if it's like a global type thing, then yeah. Like if you had a follower that gave you like plus one hero capacity like the Skaven one, that still works even if the Lord's not in play. I believe. Um, do we meet Arcan? Do we start with contact with him? Um, I'm not sure if we start off with contact with him. Um, but yeah, I want to go down and fight him soon. A sharp to carve is okay temporarily if your largest settlement is tier three. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking that before. That was kind of what I was thinking before. It might be okay to like temporarily take it, just to have that capacity and then just disband them later on. But I don't know. You want it because you want to. You got to farm the right traits, so it's like you may as well just kind of farm the trait and do without them for a while, I guess. Should we go in the corner? Prince who promised, undying prince. Black Prince! Jumbo! The cult agrees! Arise! Son of Henry! Forward! Let's just button rush the walls. Okay. We get fancy. Actually, that's probably a bad idea. Here, but just did anyway. Yeah, 
You can just um, take, you can just charge up onto the walls. It'll stop the arrows shooting. It shot the archers shooting at least. These guys going? Are they hitting? Boys, fight! There we go. Setra starts off at war with Arcan, and he can't ever sign peace with him. Okay, nice. But yeah, I'm, I'm working my way down towards him now. Hopefully, he's not going to kind of pop up out of the fog of war and surprise us. Probably don't even really need to take this out. We could probably just shoot the wall, shoot at the walls. Might as well take it out now. Guards with helmets there. Look at those constructs. Right, let's get some spell damage happening. Sure, we should come in here or not? Artillery is so devastating. Okay. Not 
Even more, like you kind of want like competent heroes like these um, skeleton speedmen and stuff, but I guess no, I suppose it doesn't really matter if they combo. Important. Lost the Battle of Eight Peaks. Feels bad. Should have brought the Rogue Idol Doom stack. Ah. Uh, oh well. It's not about winning the battle, it's about winning the war, I suppose. Constructs. Artillery's down. This isn't going as well as I would have hoped. Yeah, no, I hear. I think um, a lot of my heroes are on uh, chariots, so they can't really get up on the walls. But yeah, that was really good. I'll just get some more. I'll just get some more infantry up there. These are just normal swordsmen, so even if I just get some more speedmen up there, that should, you know, be okay. Tomb Princes wrecked this knight, that's pretty good. Oh shit, shot to you. I don't know if Banishment will actually do much damage to these knights. Uh, yeah, it's actually it was doing pretty good damage. And he's still, oh well, until it just wandered off. I think it was actually doing okay damage while it was in there. No, he can move, he can do a bit of damage. Yeah. 
Oh no, my up to you. Give me a crumble. Ooh, we got any of those like ground knights and shit in there? Yeah, it's not not great. Well, these chariots are irreplaceable. Not that they're particularly good. They're not irreplaceable because they're good, they're just irreplaceable because they can't replace them. Definitely got some issues. We win this battle on the walls. Yeah, we won't. No. Ah, cool, cool. Alright. Got there in the end. It was, uh, it was pretty rough, though. It's pretty rough. I'm not sure if I'm feeling super comfortable about chasing after the other army now. Um, I could probably start. I mean, I'm getting, I'm getting about seventy, getting about seventy. Um, what do you call it? Uh, seventy or more. Um, cannot be jars per turn now. Is that I? Do I, I probably don't really need to go as hard about trying to level, like get every like every little extra jar I can get by leveling up now. So maybe I should just leave these. Like I should switch to optimal lords, Tre like get a treacherous lord for the scorpions. Get like an archer lord, and then and then just like leave them and keep leveling them up. I will not blight my soul. Uh, if we put this guy over this side, find my harm. We put him like there. Uh, yeah, I don't know if they can. I must keep my holy vow. No. Legions move. My will yeah, I think that's. I think then he can't escape now. Address me as your highness. So that should be good. He's trapped in there. This guy can't. Yeah, this guy can't join in over here. Victory, yes. <laughs> uh, unless this, if that guy sieges here, then this guy could join in. That would be rough. That could be rough. Mehekara rises from the sands. Immortality and power. Kum King of Mehekara. Yeah, so like this guy just tough. I didn't yeah, there's no reason to really have him there, so I can get rid of him. And what sort of armies he got? Yeah, nothing special. But say I could give this guy... I, alone I, know, I, I could replace him with an I one that's got a good trait. Mm. Uh, so prepared. Plus 20 infantry. Plus 20 ammunition. So that applies to the artillery. And also missile strength for the archers. So that could be good. Get a treacherous... Get another treacherous one for... Um, So yeah, maybe I'll just put this guy in charge of the army and then keep him like permanently. King of great From now on, King De Jehuti. This guy. Uh, I don't know. Don't, uh, do we want cunning? I don't think we want cunning, do we? Replace him with um. I don't know. Make this guy the treacherous one. Who's the highest level treacherous guy we've got? Treacherous level one.
Oh, we only got one. We only got one treacherous level one guy. All right, we'll um. Yeah, we'll get this one. He could be our two scorpion um guy once we get him leveled up. Rename? Yeah, actually, yeah, we could do some renames. Maybe we'll open it up to some renames for uh, for these permanent lords. My will be done. Unliving curse. Attend your king, slaves. There you go. King Lilo Lepono. Is our uh, is our scoop scorpion lord. It's one of his one of his many names. He doesn't have as many names as Cetro, but he's like he's named up. King Scoops is the most powerful. Is there a, is there a King Scoops? If you're going to play into the late, uh, if you're going to play into the late game, just keep stacking Jar Lords. If you're going to drop this campaign in time soon, don't worry about more Jar Lords. Hey, Hoods. Um, well, I'm, I mean, I'm still going to keep getting more Jar Lords, but like, like I'm still going to keep replacing like this guy, um, every turn with a new like level three guy so we can get another couple of Jars. And if we get, um, next time we get another, um, what do you call it? Wait, do I already get a new guy? I think I might have already got on this turn, but I'll order another. Um, like, I'll keep doing this guy, right? So we get, like, one more jar per turn. But, like, I won't keep, like, leveling up diff Like, these guys, I was also cycling them until they get to tier 5. Like, if I get a, put in a level 3 guy, level up to tier 5, replace him with another level 3 guy, you know? So they're... But, but now I'm thinking I'll slow down on the jars a bit more, not worry so much about that. And just, um... Yeah, just keep these guys leveling up permanently, sort of thing. Um, I had a generic lord named King Scoops in my TK campaign, and he never lost a battle in 280 turns. Oh, very nice. Um, what was I was going to say... Oh, yeah, so we've got one prepared one for shooting. I've got one scorpion one. I'm probably only going to... I'm not going to have more than one scorpion army, so I don't need another one of those. Should I just make another prepared army for archers and stuff, or is there another trait... I should be looking at. I guess okay, cunning's all right for the poison and stuff. Wrathful, prepared, prepared. It's just prepared. Um, or disciplined. I like the leadership on disciplined, but it's only plus two. Being disciplined or prepared is better, or cunning. Or we could put in, or we could put in Thutap. What's he got? Um, plus five armor for Kemri and War Sphinxes. Uh, should I put this? Should I start leveling this guy up so we can eventually get plus five armor for Kemri and War Sphinxes? Or is that not really needed? We've only got one Kemri and War Sphinx at the moment. Who's the next enemy? Uh, the next enemy is another Bretonian faction, and the one after the next enemy after that is Arcan. Um, well, I mean, I guess this guy's got archers, right? So we'll just make him a prepared lord. That way, he gets the um, he gets the extra arrow power. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we can level him up later on. Don't need to worry about it too much. Yeah. Just yet.
bow. I'm living. More slaves. I need more. My dynasty reigns supreme. The I mean, by the time I've researched all the other ones, I'll probably be able to get this. Oh, First Dynasty is good for ranged? Okay, yeah, maybe I'll go for that next. You reckon prepared is better than the armor? Oh uh, yeah, five armor is not really that big of a deal, is it? It's like 2.5% of um, non-armor piercing damage negated, so yeah, it's pretty, pretty minimal. I'm a bit worried about this guy. Will you take me for a churl? There is a chance that if Lady is really smart, this guy will siege there and then Never. that guy will join in. But it's still only like two armies against two armies. So it's not like we're gonna lose or anything. I feel like these tomb guard aren't as strong as I was hoping they were gonna be, but like even in even in um even in Citra's army, I don't feel like they're like that good. Do you think like just like Tomb Guard and Artillery is a decent army for Citra? Tomb Guard, Artillery and Age. And just get rid of the Tomb Princes. Hmm. How terrifying would we live anywhere in the Warhammer universe? Yeah, all of the Warhammer universe is pretty terrifying. There's not really any uh, any friendly places for modern humans there, I wouldn't think. Hmm. Three turns till we get our scorpions. Virus. Only slaves worry about eating. I'm not sure if I should um, bring Jalak Oasis back again or not. Maybe. Maybe we we'll just leave that for now. I don't know about it. That's pretty good. Hmm. Yeah, somebody said that we couldn't get peace treaty with Arcan. Arcan begs to differ. Um. I want to attack um, Arcan relatively soon, so there's not much point in taking this, I guess. Yeah, no, I know you can't confederate. I just um somebody was saying that you start off as at war with him and you can't can't make peace with him. 
but um, but yeah, that's not not correct, obviously. One of these minor settlement, minor um, Tony infections can be. Ah, uh, okay. Alright, we'll have to fight that, obviously. Unacceptable losses. Alright, well, we'll try and um, set up over here so we can get a few shots in with the artillery before they close the distance. That's perfect. It's perfection. Put it about there. Um, right. Oh, what's the? Oh, this is the garrison. I'm guessing. So that can just go over here to like distract them. Um, keep our busted the sharp to you. skeletons. Out of the way. These guys should be able to shoot fairly comfortably over the top of infantry, shouldn't they? Yeah, you would think so. Chariots into the spears. Yeah, spears is probably not ideal, is it? Um. Let's see if we can get a good charge on these. Right. Oh yeah, nice. Do had a 10% health in one swing. Not bad. Oh yeah, that was that was pretty good. Good, they pretty weak morale, so we down pretty fast.
these little decoy force did such a great job taking their um, hero out and their uh, and that unit. Garrison served as well. So we can net this guy right in front of our archers, it would be ideal. Oh, he really wanted it bad, but didn't quite make it. healing no no healing unfortunately but yeah yeah i'm really enjoying using the nets um i've never really used um like um law of light mu uh, much before um yeah even with um, high elves i tend to go for fire and life most of the time um although fire fire seemed to have gotten flogged pretty badly is fire like kind of not great anymore I think they, I think they nerfed Burning Head into the ground pretty much, and they slightly nerfed Flamestorm. So I don't know if Fire's even that great anymore. I mean, Fire was a pretty great lore before, but um, I don't know. It seems diminished for sure. Oh, there's our Orc buddies. Those um, these these uh, whatever they're called, whatever that faction's called. The Bone Clubber tribe, they've actually been pretty good allies, they've helped us out a bit. Yeah, it's hard to say because Woma 3 has so many other laws that do a lot of damage. Well, yeah, I'm not I'm not really counting like all the specialist laws like Law of Slanesh, Law of Nurgle, Law of whatever the Skaven one is. Um they've got two special ones don't they um yeah no, i don't no, i'm not really counting any of those ones i mean just the normal winds ones you know like fire life um light shadow death beasts metal um you know all the ones that are available to multiple factions submit to your king Mission law is so bad that you forget about it. Yeah, I don't know. It's like fun to use as like a bit of a role play sort of thing, I guess. Greatest dynasty. King Lalo. Attend your king, slaves. Find my harem. So now we use this guy to attack as he's in the first one. Obey me. To battle for the Creator God. Release them. 
Action destroyed. Cloak of the Dunes. Immune to desert attrition of the whole army. Plus 10 melee attack when fighting in deserts. And stalk on spotable. Hmm, okay. Pretty pretty uh, interesting. What you ask is impossible. Scourge of power! Fool's death awaits! Arise, my warriors! Where are my slaves? Shop to cover. Yeah, no, we don't want the shop to cover. We'll keep going until we get we get a scorpion. We need more scorpions because we're trying to fill out our specialist scorpion army. There's three. There should be three in this pool, right? Yeah. So we can. We don't need to recruit anything now. I remember they also changed some spells a couple of times. Pendulum was devastating at the beginning of Worm 3. Yeah, Pendulum, um, they nerfed it a bit. Is Pendulum still pretty good, though? Like, still okay? They didn't, like, nerf it into the ground, right? Like, because, like, Burning Head's, like, just useless now, isn't it, pretty much? Like, you don't even bother using it, basically. My or do you reckon it's still pretty decent? I don't know if I'm digging the um, Tomb Princes on the Chariots but, that much, but um, I mean, they're good when we're fighting open field battles, but it was pretty a bit of a bummer when we were fighting that siege and they couldn't go up in the walls. Maybe I'll just switch them, like, you know, I'll have them on the ground, like, in sieges, but into on the Chariots when we're in open field. Seems pretty reasonable. Yeah, these guys just aren't very good, are they? So prepared, yeah. Artillery and stuff. Um... Crimson's still pretty good. Burning Head's good if you have a way to affect fire magic resistance on the targets, but without it, the spell is spare. Um, well, most most units have no fire resistance, so what difference does it make reducing their fire resistance? You mean if you have, like, fire weakness? Some facts, there, okay. yeah, there's a fair few things, like, effects that give fire weakness. Vulnerability, yeah, yeah, no, sorry, I get what you're saying. Uh, Tomb Prince, can't get his chariot yet. Mama. King Lai, King Lilo, the Scorpion Lord. The realm of souls Some GCC treasures. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty excited about playing my Art and Arcane the Black campaign now. Now that I've finally got to understand the true power of the, um, the true power of the, uh, Tomb Kings. King of Nehekara. Also, I think, like, the Tomb, the, like, I, I kind of was thinking I didn't really want to play any other factions except for, um... Except for like um, 
Cetra because like Halita doesn't have the War Sphinx, like she doesn't have a good starting unit. But I'm now honestly thinking like it doesn't even make that much difference. Like the War Sphinx is pretty good, but it's not like the War Sphinx like turned the tide of like a heap of battles. Maybe in the early game. Onward, you may speak before my shield bearers and on the earth stone. and power we never tire summon them a living march we never tire attend your king slaves um all right so what do we got there we got hawkish precision for archers and stuff um Scorpions, no, no, oh yeah, Tomb Guard armor and uh, weapon strength, would that be worth giving to, do you reckon death blow or um, armor and weapon strength better for, um, well you could give both of these couldn't you, so you can have both those followers on. So he's got the most archers. Uh, like this guy, I guess. So give this guy the hawkish precision. So yeah, if we get this guy up to Purple Son of Xerxes, Zer of Xerius, sorry, um, then we get a we get a moving vortex, eighteen wins. Oh, 21. Yeah, it's a bit expensive, but still it'll do the job. Do you think they'll have the ruins exploration mechanic in Immortal Empires? Oh man, I hope so. I I really I suspect that they won't, because like they took it out of for like you know what I mean like why would they have taken it out for Warhammer Three if they weren't gonna? Unless maybe I don't know. I mean unless maybe they would have had to redo it. I don't know. I hope they do though. I, I really like the ruins mechanic. Um. But yeah, I think that the ruins exploration mechanic, it is kind of themed on like, um, right of the, um, it sort of seems like it might be a bit themed on the Vortex campaign because there's a lot of like lizard men, Aztec type stuff. Um, you know, so I don't know. It's, it does seem like it was, in, it was intentionally like themed around Southlands and I mean around, um, Lustre and stuff. So that that sort of makes me think that it wasn't really like intended to be like an upgrade for the game. It was more just meant to be a specific thing for um, the vortex. But then, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it was in the model. It was in Mortal Empires. So yeah, I don't know. I mean, my personal opinion is anything that was in Mortal Empires should also be in Immortal Empires plus more. You know, they shouldn't be taking anything out. Um, but I don't know. I know there's a lot of people, 
I know that some people don't like the don't like the puzzles, and some people do. Um, I feel like just in general, I've probably heard more support, more like people s complain about the puzzles. But I don't know if that's because, like, I don't know, like the people who actually go out of their way to say that they don't like something doesn't like obviously really have a problem with it. But like, it could be that the majority of people don't feel strongly about it, but think that they're okay. Um, and there's a minority of people that that don't like. It's only a minority of people that don't like the puzzles, but that minority of people that don't like the puzzles like really hate them, or something. I don't know. But um, but I don't know. Personally, I think they're really cool. I think anything that gives you like more content, like it generally, is usually pretty good. And the good thing about the puzzles is like you don't have to. It's completely optional. Like if you don't like it, then you don't need to do it. I think they hated the wheel puzzle, but they liked the gifts. Somebody to get the gift mechanic pack would be appreciated. The gift mechanic? Which gift mechanic do you mean? First thing, first thing I'm doing in uh, Immortal Empires is retaking the realms with the dwarfs. Mm. I mean, they're they're worthy. Uh, they're worthy servants. These green skins, but. I don't think that it would be appropriate for us to form an alliance with them. The mighty uh, Kimrian peoples. Uh... You get to solve the puzzle, you get some money and a magic item. Yeah, yeah, I, I want the, mag the money and the magic item and the solving of the puzzle. If they could have more different puzzles and stuff, it'd be pretty cool. I really like the Sudoku one, the one where you have to figure out what the number and the color. That's my favorite one. When's Rapunz coming back? My dynasty reigns supreme. to move. Legions rise. Hekara rises from the sands. I deign to move. Eternal king. Um. Wise. Mm. Yeah, we don't really need wise. Right, we'll get a few fine. more, um, get a few more jars. So we'll be good here. Uh, I don't think we need the charge bonus. I don't think we really need the plus five. So we get plus ten armor for two guardian units. And yeah, we'll leave a space for the other one. Puzzle based on the last owner before destruction would be cool. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that'd be really cool. I'd really like it if they added like more mini games, like maybe like the way like I reckon like I'm not saying they should do this because I'm not sure if it's worth the resources, but I reckon the ultimate version of the puzzle thing would be if you have all the existing puzzles now, plus you have more puzzles, and as you say, they base them on the previous owner's race. And in addition to that, you have like little mini games, like combat mini games. So you might have to, you might be able to send in only like um, only four units, not including your lord, 
So your lord has to stay outside with the main army, but he sends in like four units to explore the ruins or whatever. So you could send in like a hero with like a couple of units of archers and an infantry unit or something. And you just have like a little mini and then you have to fight like, you know, a couple of units of enemies or whatever. And so you have like little like, you know, because you know how at the start of the game, how those those battles at the start of the game where you only have like six or seven units or something versus another little mini army they're like kind of the, some of the most fun battles that you have like because it's just like this i don't know you can just focus more on the units and stuff so yeah i think it'd be really cool if they made that made a mechanic like that where you can you go and explore the ruins and it's like uh scouts report that there's um you know a sizable enemy force inside but there you know but there isn't enough room for your whole army to maneuver choose like five units to go in or whatever That'd be pretty cool, but I suppose there isn't really an interface for fight for you to send in. Like, there's not really an interface for you to choose the units. 40k says Lolo without any context. I like it. I also like 40k. Um, I don't know if I should explore down here or if I should just. You get some. I'm not really gonna use him, but anyway. My will be done. Servants. Could be a good chance to get some followers and some uh, crazy magic item. Well, maybe no magic item. All right, fine. Submit to your king. Nehekara rises from the sands. Land of the dead. I have risen. Tomb King, my glory, submit, legions march! Something like that. So this one's got like heavy archer. Yeah, lots of archers. And that and lots of yeah, this one's got all the range basically. That one's got more constructs. Kind of makes sense, I guess. Move, but not yet. Victory in undeath! This one. Legions, march. So I want to get the tomb guard into his army. Get a couple of archers out, and maybe I'll take out uh, the tomb prince. Mm. 
move, but not yet. Something like that. My dynasty reigns supreme. Ah, we'll just stay. We'll just worry about losing we'll turn. Leave him there. Oh, you're now the trustworthy lord. Boom. So we got the hit points in the melee attack. What do you think if Skaven settlements could ambush armies that tried to dwell them without research, without searching first? Uh, no, I don't think you want to make it like too overly. Like, I, I think for me personally, I'd rather I just want it to be like a bonus thing with the ruins. I don't necessarily want it to be like an extra level of, you know, like if it's an if it's a occupy if it's occupied by Skaven, then um, they should be able to you know potentially have like un, uh, buildings or you know like if they have like how the um, I like how the lizard men have that, um... Oh, did they gr Oh, did the orcs come in and take it? Yikes. These orcs are fucking annoying as shit. <laughs> Maybe I should kill them. They keep ruining... They keep, uh... Messing up my shit. Submit to your king. Hmm. Not about all this. My dynasty reigns supreme. Find my harem. I reign. I have arrived. Let's get some tomb scorpions happening. Orcs is the best. Interlopers, exactly. Yeah, no, I think, like, um, the way it is now, how, like, certain factions like the Skaven, the Vampire Coast, and the and Oxyodles faction, you know, can they can build sort of, like, um, hidden under-Empire type stuff um, to... that can, you know, like, the Oxyodles ones can ambush stuff in the local regions and stuff like that. I think that's cool. Like if you actually invest, like if you actually invest in building something underneath, uh, in underneath the settlement, um, that's fine. But I think if, if they've been like wiped out, like, like if, like cause Skaven are normally like that, they're like hidden underground. Right. And you don't know that they're there. 
Um, but if you go in and like burn them out and kill them all and stuff, then, you know, you, that's the whole point of doing that is so that uh, your armies are not in danger when they will move through there, you know? So I don't think that that should be a thing. Not if it's a ruin. If it, if it appears to be a ruin, but it's actually not, then that's, you know, that's fair game. Probably my take on it. All right, well... Hmm. I guess it's about that time. I'm awake. Onward, soldiers. What the? What is that? The fucking lizard man army here. Oh, we go. Petra watches. My will be done. Where is this? Moving. Make way. Hmm. Very close to being able to uh, attack in one turn, but not quite. Attend your king, slaves. I deem it. My wrath. Your advice. Legions, move. If Arcan just comes out of nowhere and just lightning strikes all my shit to death, that would really suck, but Onward, I don't think that's going to happen. We never tire. Strive to greatness. could have gotten better positions there, but that's right. He will serve. This green skin mechanic of sometimes not downgrading capital buildings has a have a law behind it. Uh, no, not as far as I know. No, I think they just decided to give them a special thing. Um, yeah, I don't know. I. Yeah, I don't remember anyone ever saying that um, that there was any law reason behind it. There could be. Watch my minions. I know in 40k they have like looted vehicles and stuff like that. It used to be a, a, um, a rule like where you could get like imperial tanks and stuff and have them be looted by the orcs. And then the orcs, even though orcs shouldn't know how to make imperial technology work, they just use the power of the war to just make it work somehow. Um, so I don't know if it's something like that, but yeah, I know I haven't heard of anything. Yeah, I wouldn't be against them giving Skaven a defensive structure like, like, like Oxyodal's one that gives them an ambush ability to like, um, to do stuff. But I don't know, I mean, there's a lot of overlapping mechanics. Like you've already got Skaven corruption, which represents like that the place is infected, infested by rats and gives attrition and whatever. And the scaven and probably stealing people's babies and all that kind of stuff but that's a bit more of a you know um arbitrary sort of thing it's not you know not as active as like an actual army that ambushes he does not impress me Right, yeah, we need some more, um, we need some more Scorpion capacity. We got those Necrotex, Shopti Carver. Yeah. I'm gonna try and find a Scorpion Carver. I wonder if I should take a Scorpion Caliber or maybe I should just take a Sphinx because by the time now we're kind of getting up to the point where we're probably going to get we're probably going to get small Sphinxes and stuff fairly you know before too too long I haven't got much growth here but it's pretty far away it's kind of that's what yeah I guess Al Hayek is kind of like um the coast of Arabia is kind of like a blade of armor like we might get invaded and I'm not really going to be in a position to defend it 
but that'll slow things down, so at least we should be able to defend over here. Um, I'd really like to get military access in case we need to walk back and forth through these dwarfs. I don't know if we're going to get it, though. Is this prepared? Yeah. Sharp D, Necro Sphinx, War Sphinx. That one's the like shittest one. You want to build the Black Tower of Arcan? It's going to take 10,000 gold and it doesn't really do anything amazing. Local public order plus five, but it's like, yeah, whatever. I think we'll go for um, scorpions. Do we have any, is there, there's no followers that reduces the build cost of... Um, Of those sort of military buildings, I don't think is there. Mm. Bone giant. Oh, yeah. We want us some bone giant, but we probably want to reduce the cost of that before we're going to build it. Hmm. Hey, Robbers. No, the, we've got the architect follower already, but the architect follower is only for infrastructure. I don't think it applies to military buildings. The um, yeah, the necrotech follower. What if we should take this defensive alliance? Hey, Lord Zemnus, how do you think Tomb, Ca Tomb Kings will stack up against Corn? I don't know, what do you mean? Like in multiplayer? Yeah, I got no idea. Um, My servant but um, it doesn't seem like a great matchup for this Tomb Kings because um, because they, um, you know, Corn's melee will shred the Tomb King's melee, you would think. And, um, in corner sort of resistant to magic so in immortal empires uh i think whichever one the human player plays is going to win is he sieging oh, is this really just cock block my siege dick Yeah, it's a pretty hard question, Lemnus, because Lord Zem Zemnus, sorry, 
because um, we don't even know what Corn's got yet. You know, we've only seen one of Corn's lords, and they haven't even got their first DLC. You know, so like when the next DLC comes out for Corn, like Corn's probably going to get two more DLCs, just as a guess. You know, so they're going to get a bunch of new units that we haven't even seen yet. You know, one or more of those units hopefully will change the game somewhat for corn because if you get new dlc units and they don't substantially change the tactics with the faction at all then it's a bit of a you know it's not really a great dlc so presumably they're going to get at least one or two units that are going to be really fundamentally changed or you know make the faction different and better um plus they're going to get two more lords probably you know just as a guess they'll get two more dlc lords that are going to have unique crazy faction mechanics that we don't even know yet so you know um but yeah but i mean i don't know i assume that they are probably going to be more powerful than tomb kings because tomb kings are kind of old right tomb kings don't have anything like crazy on that level of like scarbrand's faction mechanics you know so yeah i mean corn's like the most corn's one of the most powerful factions in the game right now um when you're playing a scarbrand because of that movement mechanic so i imagine it's still going to be you know, he's going to be, no, like, if you're playing as Scarbrand, you're much everyone. If you're talking about the AI auto-resolve battling each other, me, yeah, I don't know. Let's get these guys to pay us to fight them. Or not, I will strike you down, and scum, we'll, um, if your words displease me. And then we'll fight them as well. I will. Dastardly plan. Alright, now they're gonna run. Are you serious? God damn it. Look how far away it ran. Alright, um... My I think a quick game is a good game with this one. We'll just... Drop, uh... You dare. My this is a tier 3. Be yeah. done. Legions rise! Right, King Dahuti can take that. To battle for the Creator God. Take it for me. Yeah, you have to kind of plan Scarsbrands. Yeah, you have to plan for the the sort of withdraw direction and stuff like that. It's kind of fun, like trying to like move him around so he was gonna like retreat away the direction you wanted to go and all that kind of stuff. But I don't know. Overall, I feel like Scarbrand's mechanics are just a bit too gamey for me. It's kind of the same with Torox. Like, it's it is fun. Like, like it's not really a criticism. Like. I'm happy that Torox and Scarbrand are in the game, but I feel like they're, because they're so kind of, they're such gamey sort of factions, I feel like they're more the sort of factions I want to play just as a, like, a refresher, you know, to, like, just, if like, just for something totally different, you know, to, to freshen the palette before you get back to, like, a proper faction. But, yeah, I don't really consider them to be, like, kind of, like, proper Total War factions. They're a bit too kind of gamey for me. I'm actually kind of hoping that they bring in a... Um, that they bring in another corn faction that's a bit more stodgy and not as not as dynamic as Scarbrand. Like a bit more kind of like a regular faction. But I think corn's not going to be the faction. I don't think corn's ever going to be the type, the right sort of faction for me because I think they're a bit too aggressive for me. Like I love their units and stuff, but I think those those type of like move relentless movement type mechanics, I just they don't really suit me suit my style. I don't think. 
Nehekara <laughs> rises from the sands. Tomb King of Nehekara. Moving. Attend your king, slaves. Sentra the Imperished. Sentra comes. A boon from Sentra. Armor of Destiny. Oh, yeah. And that was the end of the Spirit of the Jungle. Nice. Um, where's this guy gonna land? My dynasty reigns supreme. Land of the dead. My will be done. Um, I suppose we should push on towards. We should push on towards um, Arkans' home base over here. Onwards, soldiers! What do you guys think about this army? Do you think this army of like Tomb Guard with a couple of artillery is like okay or kind of shit? Just, yeah, I'm not sure. It's like, I mean, he does buff Tomb Guard, right? So I should, you know, have, have a lot of Tomb ready. Guard. I think. But I don't know if they're really like strong. Hey, Lolo. Thanks for the Scorpion King. Oh, no worries, buddy. I thank you for all your super chats. I figured if somebody deserves a rename for this campaign, it's definitely you. <laughs> I personally, just put a beefy front line of Tomb Guarded Citrus Army and keep a back line of Archers on it anyway. Okay, so you use Arch. See, I feel like Archers seems a bit like limp for a, uh, you know. Or a doom stack. I guess it's it's not really a doom stack, though, is it? I guess. Well, my kind of plan, I guess, was to have some tomb guards, some artillery, and then have um, Setra and a couple of tomb princes on chariots to kind of like go around and cause carnage. I don't know how, you know, realistic that is, though. Vampire count tactics. Okay. Speed and charge bonus for Lord's Army. Yes, yeah, so that's not really that great for um, Tomb Guardians, is it? But yeah. on your knees, priest king of greatest dynasty. What? Do you reckon that trade, like having trade goods in Warhammer 2 makes you have more chance of getting trade partners? Because in, in Warhammer 3 it's more transparent, like you can see, like if you try to get trade with somebody and you don't have enough trade um, goods, it'll straight out tell you that you don't have enough trade goods to get, you know, that's why nobody wants to trade with you. Um, but yeah, I like, I often suspected that it was like that in Warhammer 2, but, you know, I was never really sure.
Now would be a good time to insert ads. It was constantly tells me to insert ads. I wonder if there's any advantage to inserting ads. Oh, beep boop. Oh, hey, everybody. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. We've got a big, big legend raid incoming. The, uh, yeah, the, uh, the view account just went up quite a bit. Hey, everybody. Legend raid confirm. Acknowledged. Welcome. Legendo is nab. Indeed. I will, uh, I will polish my sword pommel in your honor. Welcome. Welcome, everybody. Jesus, this is a big raid, actually. We've got 140 people in here now. We might have to draw the sword if we get any more people in here. How you going, guys? Welcome, welcome. Thanks, uh, thanks so much to Legend for the raid. It was awesome. Wow. 160 people. 170 people. Fuck, this is a big raid. Big raid. How is the lack of swerving? Big raid day? It's a huge raid day. 185 people. Crazy. Legend sends his regards with a Gatling gun. Yeah, Legend raid goes brr. There's lots of beep boops. It's like beep boop brr. Angry, Angry Jet Love's become a member. Oh, wow, man. Thank you. That's awesome. We demand the sword. We might have to pull out the sword. I used to do some sword play every time um, Every time Legend uh, did a raid. But then, um, yeah, like I, I think everyone had seen the sword too many times. So I, just, I stopped pulling it out. Do I use that sword in sparring or just for phallic symbolism? Mainly for phallic symbolism, bro. And just to suggestively polish my pommel. Um, but um, I don't know. I've never done that before, actually, honestly. I don't know why I just did that. Um, beat boop by the sword, indeed. Legend had 3K today's. Oh, 3K viewers. Oh, wow. Awesome. So he's coming back. I was I, I messaged him the other day. And um, oh, I got another subscriber. Thanks for subscribing, man. Oh, thanks for the super chat, Lalo. Much appreciated, man. Thanks for all your support. Um, yeah, um, no, Legends, um, yeah, I was, I messaged Legend the other day saying that it seemed like it was, um, it seemed like it was, um, getting a bit more popular, like with, um, like Wemo was getting a bit more, um, you know, popular again, like more people were coming to the streams and stuff like that. And, um, yeah, I think he commented saying that he thought he noticed a slight, um a slight increase so yeah if we're getting um if we're getting like three thousand, you know uh in the stream then that's definitely uh pretty significant um my um i stopped doing the sword as well because my old apartment their roof was too low but um it's against youtube's terms and conditions to pull out your sword yeah and probably is actually but um but you know what, what are they going to do about it Claymore? No, it's not a claymore. This is a long sword. Um, I don't know if I can actually get far enough back for you to be able to see. But yeah, this is a long sword. This was um, the premier knight's weapon back in the day, back in the medieval times. Um, though this is actually technically this is not actually a long. This is not actually a sword. This is called a fetish sword. This is what the sword masters back in the day used to use to train young swordsmen. Um, yeah, being a swordmaster was actually a thing, uh, certainly in the later medieval period. Um, in the in the age of like mercenaries and stuff like that, I think well, one of the stories I heard was that basically if you're a swordsman, you get paid more. The swordsman will get pay, get paid like double or like fifty percent more or whatever than than like pikemen and stuff. So if you're a young mercenary or a young mercenary prospect, um, you know it would be worth you paying a swordmaster to teach you how to use a longsword. Um, because you would get better, um, you get better pay as a mercenary, and also if you're a nobleman, um, then you would want to have to, you'd want to be good with a sword because you might have to do duels, you know, so you could have like, yeah, judicial duels and also like personal duels and stuff like that. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, longsword, naked longsword, which is so non non armored longsword. They used to use longswords along with full harness, but also they use longswords for duels. Like before, they got into like rapier duels, you know, in the musketeer times and stuff. The long sword was the, the, the knight sword that you'd use in a duel. Um, but yeah, there really is not enough space for me to... Because um, like, even if I was going to throw a normal cut, you step. Every time you throw a cut, you step. So even so if I throw a cut, like, I can't... I, there's not enough room. <laughs> you know, like, my hands will hit the camera be, before I even put the sword down. But if I, if I lean back a bit, and if I throw a cut without stepping which I would, you would never do, then you still can't really see anything, can you? <laughs> I can squat down and squat down like a samurai. 
yeah this is pretty pretty hopeless yeah there's not enough room to um to do any sword play in here you can sort of do pretend stuff but you can't actually do the movements like you would actually do it but um but yeah i don't know my quick advice for longsword is um you know keep your point online pointing towards the person's face very hard to approach somebody if they've got their point right in your face and um uh yeah stab them with the pointy end basically um yeah thrusts are for killing basically you know cuts cuts are not as deadly thrusts is how you kill with a long sword uh, most of the time and uh yeah but if you're in a duel with a with a german then you should never use the thrust because that's very dishonorable you should only use cuts in duels you only use thrusts against like foreigners and scum <laughs> so yeah there we go we've done the full long sword i think that was a pretty worthy pretty worthy episode of long sword with mercy so i hope you guys appreciated that and thank you legend for the um for the big host we will actually do a bit of um warhammer warhammer total war now because it's a not a it's not a hema stream it's actually a warmer stream <laughs> but, um, big mordhau fan no i'm not actually I've got a mate who's a big chivalry, uh, chivalry, chivalry aficionado, um, and um, uh, but I never really got into it. I have played chivalry a few times. I never played Mordhau, um, but uh, yeah. Please, please not end the stream with your sword by accident. <laughs> Indeed, the sword is a city self-defense weapon. The pole arm is a war combat weapon. Yeah, that's yeah, that's fair. Yeah, the sword, I didn't think, yeah, your sword was never, long sword was probably never really a primary combat weapon, I wouldn't think. I don't know, I guess if you're a dismounted knight, you might use a long sword as your primary weapon. But if you're a mounted knight, then you'd have a lance. But yeah, they're certainly, they were what you would use in a duel. So every young gentleman would want to know how to do it. So yeah, we're still trying to get a decent trait on our uh, Necrotech. So yeah, for those of you who have uh, seen lots of uh, Tomb King streams, I'm um, I'm a bit of a noob Tomb King player. This is probably only my second, my second like decent campaign with them. Um, I played like I have played a, here and there, but never really gotten far with it. Never really, never really clicked with me, you know. So I put out the call for um, some of the guys in the community to give me some uh, some instructions, give me some tips and tricks. And uh, yeah, I think you've I think you've got me there. I think I've actually gotten to the point now where I'm actually really digging the Tomb Kings, and um, I I get it now. I get it. Tomb Kings are awesome. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm actually like really enjoying this campaign, and I'm actually really want to. Do an arcane the black campaign after this as well maybe not back to back i might do dwarfs next or something but um but yeah i'm pretty keen to do an arcane the black one soon just uh, popping out some skills uh i guess you want to get some what's the scorpion skill team scorpions yeah What are the Tomb King's cheeses? Oh, hey, Mr. DB, Mr. BD1991. I've actually got a video pinned in the chat there um, where I actually put in a few um, of the of the basic cheeses. If you guys are familiar with, um, if you guys are all uh, big fans of Legend of Total War, you probably know all this these cheeses. But bear in mind, I'm kind of new, I'm kind of new to the Tomb King game, so yeah. Um, if you um, yeah, if you want to know some of the like classic Tomb King cheeses and stuff. Um, my uh, my top three Tomb Kings followers video um, is uh, pinned there if any of you guys want to check it out. And um, it's also just got the the Canopic Arch, the Canopic Jar Cheese, and um, some other little bits and pieces. Um, yeah, we're going for a Death Priest. i um, got all of my other ones are Priests of Light, but um, we're going for a Death Priest on this guy just for just to mix it up a bit. Basically just because he had knowledgeable and I couldn't be bothered waiting to farm another one. A good servant. 
Is Death Strike good on Chariot as well? I imagine it would be. Yeah. I wonder what, um, I haven't looked at the stats of chariot, of hero chariots. I wonder if they get good, um, I wonder if they get good, like, um, charge attack. All right. A la Triste with Viggo Mortensen is the only Pike and Shot movie. The battle scene is super popular. What the hell? I haven't heard of this. What's this a la triste? It sounds it sounds crazy. It sounds good. I want that. Am I allowed to watch um like Am I allowed to watch um like movie trailers on stream or is that gonna break terms and conditions or something? Is that a la triste is it good? Oh wow. That looks, the costumes look really good. Is it a good movie? Give us a review of Alatrice Sip. I want to know, I want to know. It looks really, it looks really nice. Like the, um, the, co the costumes and stuff look really good. Might be selling it too hard. Are the battle scenes more popular than the movie itself? Oh, okay. I really like that one, that Dutch one about the, the Admiral that's apparently he's like saved the Netherlands or whatever. I can't remember the name of it now. It's probably called like the Admiral or something. My faith in you, you reckon this army is going to be a threat? I kind of think it's, I kind of think he's screwing himself over by taking that army up there, but. <clears throat> hmm. King of Thunes. Submit to your king. Is he gonna have walls on here? Obey me. Submit to your king. A living march. I deem it. Defend your king, slaves. No, I have to get some. Hey, Niven, how you going, man? Really like Admiral, Dutch Admiral, and he came along with Willem of Orange and defeated France. Yeah, that's the one. Alatrice has 6.1 rating out of 10 on IMDb. I don't really, I don't really care about ratings on IMDb. I mean, they're still, like, I'd still check the rating on IMDb, but, like, I don't necessarily put a huge amount of stock in it because, yeah, like, a lot of it's to do with, the, it can be to do with the type of content that it is, you know, like certain things are maybe more popular than others and stuff like that, you know. Have you watched the Homeblower series? Yeah, yeah, I love the Homeblower series. Have you watched the, um, have you watched Sharp's Rifles Black Optics? If you like Homeblower, you'll probably like Sharp's Rifles as well. It's a little bit different, but it's, uh, it's very much the same type of thing. Uh, I guess there's no point fighting this. We can just sort of resolve it. Oh, yeah. We'd like to do a battle for you guys since we've got like a whole bunch of people come over from um I see you finally yielded to Tomb Guard spam. Um yeah, well I just I didn't have any I didn't have the ability to recruit Tomb Guard, so but now I do. Yeah, I guess we lost the plan. Oh nice, we got executioner. I like the viewer ratings more. IMDb is still subjective. Have you watched Serenity? It's one of the all-time, one of the all-time most beloved as sci-fi series out there. Serenity is not a series in Evan. Serenity is a movie. Um, yeah, Firefly is the series. Bow before your king. I was actually just watching a little YouTube video about Jane the other day, uh, earlier yesterday, I think. I have, lol. Well, I like the battles, but the show has much more soapy than I was hoping for. Still good, though. Oh, uh, yeah, I just love um, Sharp's character, you know, like that sort of, you know, I don't know. Um, like, he's got character, you know, like he's he's a good man, basically. But he's, uh, but he's you know, rough around the edges and all that kind of stuff. It's pretty good. You've got to have a little bit of, um, got to have a little bit of soapiness.
Actually, we'll put. Just some skill points around here. Actually, we'll give him some more jars. Attend your king, slaves. Arm Rose. This is the. Oh yeah, this is our, our archer lord. Give him some more buffs to his archery. My dynasty reigns supreme. My death mage is getting there. Served me in life. Now, death. Jars. More jars. All the jars. What are we up to now? 118 jars per turn. Not bad. Victory, yes! <laughs> Mr. Mad, the speed skill gives like 8% HP at level 2. What? What speed skill? What? Speed skill gives... Speed. Oh, this one? Oh! Wow. Nice, thank you. Yeah, so the speed skill for the Tomb Princess gives you 8% speed and 6%. And 6% health. So it actually makes them tankier. Nice. Yeah, I would have taken that if I'd known. So yeah, that's cool. Thanks for that. I'll get that. I'll, uh, I'll definitely get into that next. Um, military presence of one. Hmm, I wonder how much chance there is that there's an army sitting outside. What's their um, faction strength? Faction strength 58. So their faction strength is still pretty high. But... It's probably mostly this army. So I'm reckoning we can probably back over here. Submit to your king. You dare. Priest King. Where is this? Land of the dead. Legions march! Me as the tomb scorpions over here. My dynasty. Um. Six more. Hmm. Greatness we need more. We need a scorpion cover. The greatest artist. Just use these new lord, new heroes to scout a little bit before I disband them. This is my endeavor. I hope go. Just trying to get um followers with the um get get another just trying to get another witch, witch priest with the knowledgeable trait um but i think that's the only way that we can increase our winds of magic um so yeah i'm just gonna every turn i'm just recruiting one of these guys hoping they'll get knowledgeable what's this capacity is this plus two i think it's plus two capacity that's pretty good The Road Warrior. How are you missing them out? Hey, Jesse Williams. I'm pretty good. Uh, if you like uh, medieval movies, one against the Ottomans produced in my country in the 70s, that is, dare I say, good. Michael the Brave. Okay, no worries. Um, if you're if you're interested, um, guys, as well, if you're on the Discord, um, there's a link. There should be a link in the description below if you want to join my Discord. Um, there's a there's a movies section in there. Um, and you can like post uh, links to movies and stuff if you want to suggest stuff to other people. Um, and uh, yeah, if you've got any suggestions for me, if you would, yeah, if you want to post it on the Discord or if you want to like post it in the comments on one of my videos, because I always read the comments later on. But like, if you tell me in stream, like, um, or maybe you know, maybe you do both tell me in stream and put a comment or put it on the Discord because that way I can check it later and find it because i know like one the other day we had a big chat about like all of the top tv shows we were talking about like what was the best tv show ever made and all that stuff so it was stuff's coming up like deadwood sopranos hbo rome the wire um breaking bad 
um, you know, and like, and there was actually a few TV shows that people suggested that I was actually like, oh yeah, that's a good idea. I should watch that. Um, but over the course of a like eight hour stream, you know, of course I totally forgot all of them by the time, you know, by the end. So, um, I wonder if I should go and get some sea treasures with this guy. Now we need to bring our scorpions down, don't we? Could. I'll give this guy a Necrotech. Channel the Necrotech and give this guy one as well. Actually, yeah, no, we'll just wait till. Until later. Um, and we'll give him. I should have put him inside the building. I could have done um, global recruitment as well to get him up to speed a bit faster. Get some more archers in there, but that's all right. Tom Holland and John Bernthal made a Crusader movie recently. It's nowhere near Kingdom of Heaven, but if you're a star for Crusader movies, really, you can't go wrong. Oh, really? Tom Holland and John Bernthal? What's it called? Hey, WMD. Um, first, um... First faction to play in more Immortal Empires will probably be Warriors of Chaos. I'm super excited about the Warriors of Chaos rework. Um, yeah, really looking forward to playing maybe like Sigvald the Magnificent or Archeon. Or I'm really hoping that these when they do these four new um, these four new champions that are supposed to come out of the DLC that's supposed to come out alongside Immortal Empires. I'm really I'm I wouldn't be surprised if it's four um, four Chaos champions like one for each of the four Chaos gods. I would wouldn't be surprised at all if that was true, but um, but I'm really hoping that one or two of them will be Warriors of Chaos ones, or if they are like all four Chaos gods, if they do a free LC Lord for Warriors of Chaos, because there's heaps of different Warriors of Chaos lords that would be cool to get. I'd really like to have like a called Hellbrass, um, but he's like aligned to Zeech, so he could be Warriors of Chaos or he could be Zeech. Um, but yeah, I'd really like to see some more of the mortal some more of the mortal um, champions be done at Chaos, not as like Zinch or the other uh, mono gods, but then have them be like, um, have them be like Sigvald. Because I think the way they're doing Sigvald is he's going to be Warriors of Chaos, basically, but he's going to have all of the Slanesh no, um, mechanics and access to Slanesh demon units. So, um, you know, so I think like if you did a cold Hellbrass, you could do the same thing. You know, make him Warriors of Chaos. But he could have like access to Zeech demons, give him some of the Zeech mechanics, maybe not the full, not the full thing. Um, but yeah, you know. So yeah, he's. I mean, I'm not saying he's like the best one you could do. He's just like yeah. I I, I had the Acold Hellbrass um, model as well when I was young, and so he's just you know one of the ones that had a place in my heart, you know, from back in the in the nineties. People would complain Acold is OP. Well, they just don't make him OP. Like, they, they get to choose how they implement him, you know? But I think it'd be really, really cool if he had that ability where he heals everything around him in an aura. Like, because basically, Acold, like, heals everything around him. Like, the the grass like grass grows and fresh, fresh life sprouts everywhere. If he's fighting enemies in combat, like, his friends and enemies both, like, come back to life and stuff. And um, that'd be really cool. So yeah, but you could do it. You wouldn't have to make it super overpowered. You could make it like he's just got like um, like a you know, I don't know, cup few hit points per second regeneration aura or something like that. Um, and so it wouldn't really make much difference, you know. Does not serve. All right, I think we're good to go here. I'm sort of holding off on all this stuff because I want to use my ne my channel Valley, Valley Necrotech followers to um, reduce the cost. Tom Holland Crusade movie is named Pilgrimage, by the way. Let's see. What what do you guys think about me um playing movie trailers on the stream? Is that gonna get me a copyright copyright claim or or not? I don't know. I feel like it shouldn't give me a copyright claim because like um it's advertising, right? I don't know. It's weird like that, but like I think like even though it's advertising and I'm helping advertise them. I think they can still copyright claim me if I play their advertisement. So it's sort of like, yeah, I don't know. I'm almost certain you'll get a strike. Yeah, I, um, I hope they won't get a strike, but yeah, I'll probably get a claim. 
Um, I want to, um, yeah. Well, I want to show, I just want to show the screenshot of this Alarista movie. I wonder if I could do Alarista as a, maybe images and get like a still picture of it or something. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. All right, cool. Let's do this. Oh, that's a uh, open image in your tab. Yeah, that works. Um, so yeah, before we were looking at the map, the new map to see the new start positions. Um, we've been kind of reviewing the new start positions every day as they come out. The, if anyone was interested today, the, the Wood Elves was the new start positions that came out today. Um, and all of them are in exactly the same places that they were in before. So, um, you know, uh, Argulon and... Um, uh, I mean, Dirthu and Dirthu and Orion are still in the same places, both in the forest there. Um, the sisters are still over here near uh, Torox, Torox and um, Katep. Um, and Drykar is still in the Griffin Wood over in the Eastern Empire here. So, um, so you can't see the coast. So yeah, everyone here as well. So they're all basically all in the same place. Um, but yeah, what I was going to show you was this. So this is uh, Alarista, that um, video, that, that movie that um, we were just talking about before. Um, it's not in English. It's got subtitles. But if you're interested in this sort of like pike and shot kind of uh, thing, um, this looks really cool. Like the costumes look really historical and stuff. I don't, I don't really know that period that well to know like how accurate it is, but it, it looks really good. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that's that one. And the other one with Tom Holland... That, um, and yeah, so if somebody wants to remind me to look at, like post a comment on the Discord or in, or in one of the videos and tell me to check out Alarista, I want to check that out. Late 15th century? Um, no, nah, it'll be later than 15th century because they've got muskets and stuff. 15th century, like 1400s, they didn't have like muskets and shit like that, I don't think. They might have had, um, they might have had like handguns or whatever. But they, had, they might have had cannons, but I don't think they would have had. Or maybe not even cannons. They might have... 14th century, what did they have then? Like bombards and like shitty early gunpowder stuff, maybe. Not sure. Or maybe that was even before gunpowder was invented. I'm not sure. Well, not invented. It was probably around in other places, but... Yeah, not a sure. Somebody who's more, he's got more of a historical knowledge will have to tell me. Uh, what was this Tom Holland movie? Um, it was called Pilgrimage or something. Let's see if we can find it. I do like Tom uh, Bernthal. Um, John Bernthal, sorry. Oh, uh, I don't know. Nah, it looks a bit, looks a bit naff. Looks a bit naff. Oh, well, I might check it out anyway. I mean, I probably will check it out. I definitely will check it out, obviously. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. From the screenshots, it doesn't look that great. But I'm interested in checking it out anyway. Um, but uh, yeah, this uh, this looks awesome. Uh, the um, the uh, this um, Alarista. They I don't know what the movie the quality of the movies like, but the um, but the historical costumes look really cool. Anyway, it's not a movie stream. It's not a Hema stream. It's a Total War stream. But we'll get back to that. But um, but yeah, now I've been really enjoying uh, really enjoying Tomb King. So yeah, thanks again to everyone who's given me advice and tips for how to play uh, how to play Tomb Kings. Um, uh, post didn't do it justice. I watched the movie recap of it and didn't look crap compared to the poster. Oh okay, well maybe I should check it out. Can't build can't beat Kingdom of Heaven for Crusade movies. Yeah, Kingdom of Heaven is pretty good. I haven't watched that in a long time. Maybe I should check it out. Screenshots look like a Warhammer Fantasy Empire LARP. <laughs> Lol. Alright. Arcan, we are coming for you. Oh shit, he's pretty... This is pretty serious. Are these guys at war with him? They're not at war with him, are they? Hmm. I wonder if we can get him to, get him to join the war. This is forbidden! Power in 
don't know if we should send an army back up there to help in case we get a bit um, overwhelmed. Maybe we should give this guy the scorpion follower. We have way too many bows in that army. This army? That's this isn't even an army, that's just a recruiting stack. Immortality and power. My dynasty reigns supreme. That's not even the Scorpion Lord. They're just recruiting Scorpions for, um... They're just recruiting Scorpions for, uh, this guy. Who doesn't use the Scorpion Lord, but he doesn't have any Scorpions currently. I feel like there's not going to be much down here. But I don't know if I want to send two, like, fairly weak armies, but they, they should be okay, you would think, hopefully. Now we go. Legions move. Stride to greatness. Ah, uh, yeah, that looks pretty Do not doable. Your king. I have risen. My faith in you wins. Nehekara rises from the sands. We never tire. Stride to greatness. Great. Oh, should we take out this um, boat? Is there going to be a battle? I can never remember how to figure out whether it's going to be a battle or not, or even if you can. I'm not sure if you can figure it out whether it is or not. Oh yeah, we got about, ah, oh, it's only a little one. Uh, maybe I'll fight it just because, I don't know, I want to have a fight against something. We're probably going to take more casualties than we would if we didn't fight it, but let's see how we go. Skulls are 20k in a battle. Yeah, the skulls are always battles, yeah, but the ones that are like shipwrecks and stuff, I'm never like 100% sure if they're battles or not. Are they, are the shipwrecks always battles? Ships and islands are sometimes battles. Okay, so it's not always. Leviathans and shipwrecks and chaos-looking things are battles. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sure. Is the director's cut of Kingdom of Heaven heaps better than the normal cut of it? All right, so. Yeah, these tomb kings, like to, these tomb guard, like what do we think about them? Are they really good? How cool is that you got like three different versions? Because you got like the halberd and shield with silver shield, then you've got the sword and shield with silver shield. Um, both of them have got super melee defense, and then you've got these um, dual, like dual weapon, damage dealer versions that have also got regeneration. So it's pretty cool. You're not too sold on the. Ru ru on the ROR Tomb Guard. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, losing the shield is pretty bad. But on the other hand, they, they've got regeneration, so that's pretty cool. Have you tried to play Beastmen, Norska, or Chaos and raise the map? No, I have not. The theatrical cut, theatrical cut is mediocre. The director's cut is one of Ridley Scott's best movies. Shit, maybe I need to watch this. Can somebody, yeah, seriously, can somebody like put a comment on one of my videos and say, watch watch um kingdom of heaven director's cut because i always like have these you know i have these epiphanies during the stream and then i completely forget afterwards and don't don't watch it um i mean we should be able to do pretty well with these silver shields right i would think but i suppose uh, i mean we should probably just sit back and shoot them with artillery shouldn't we that would be the clever thing to do I just, I'm really hanging to use these Tomb Guard in a, like a tactically meaningful battle. Um, but yeah, this is probably not, not it. Damn, 
These stunt mobiles. I move. So be it. Favorite Warhammer 2 DLC. Oh, I don't really have a favorite DLC, Joe. I just buy everything. Um, yeah, I wouldn't. Um, They were pretty braced, but they also just ate shit. Check that out. That smashed them. I can't believe how much damage that did to them. Like 70% damage from three chariots. That is sick. That's um that's gotta be charge attack. Because they've got good attack, um the good good um you know char damage. <sighs> Deleted. This is the first time I've really used the um, Tomb Kings. I mean, the Tomb Prince as much as um, chariots. Man, let's um, charge something else. Let's charge some. Let's charge some uh, anti-large. Oh, this one didn't make it out. Is he gonna make it? I think he's gonna make it. He's stuck. These chariots are fun. I'm liking this. Although this guy got he got caught and he got pretty damaged. What do we use for healing on uh, Tomb Kings? Can we Oh actually Citra's got his load on the heal, isn't he? Keep these guys up with that. What's been your favorite new start position change for Immortal Empires so far? Um, I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, not most of them. Most of them, I don't really care because I, I don't really play a lot of the factions. You know, I only play the factions that I actually like. So you know, so the ones that are impactful to me are the ones that are on my favorite factions. So Volkmar, the Empire is one of my favorite factions. Maybe maybe, maybe even my favorite faction. Um, so Volkmar is a pretty impactful one. Um, I'm not sure if it's one of my favorite changes though. Like I'm, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm just thinking about confederations like whether I'm going to try to get Volkmar to like confederate migrate back to the empire, whether I'm going to try to start off as like Karl Franz and then confederate Volkmar back into the empire. Um, you know, um, that kind of stuff. Um, 
who else moved? Um, all, all the Warriors are Chaos ones um, I'm interested in. So the Sigvald one... Um, actually, we don't know where Sigvald is exactly, do we? We know that he's somewhere in the northwest. Like, he's somewhere near... Um, we know he's somewhere near... Um, near Nagrond. I think he's in the northwest Chaos Wastes. Um, so that's interesting to me. Um... Voltmar? Voltmar moved to the Southlands. Voltmar's like... Yeah, Voltmar's like around around here somewhere now. I'm not sure exactly where, but yeah, somewhere around here. Uh, oh, we can chat. I guess we can bring the map back up again. That's not the map. Um, yeah, Voltmar moved to here. Um, he's on the shifting... Left-hand side of shifting sands in the mountains. Looks like the mountains. Um, actually, it probably says in the Empire one. There's so many. It'd be good if they conglomerated this all into one list. Uh, he'd be starting in Sudenberg. Yeah. Next is Vampire Coast, then Dwarfs. I'll be interested to see with Dwarfs. I imagine it's only going to be Grim Rindle's the only one that's going to really move too much. But, um... I mean, I feel like Karat Kadrin, they could change Karat Kadrin's one as well, but they didn't say anything about it, so I'm guessing that he'll just uh, stay where he is. But, like, I feel like uh, Ungrim could be one sort of, like... Un Ungrim's one of those ones that I reckon they could do, like, Malice Darkblade or, um, or um, Eltharian, where he has, like, a dual starting position or something like that. Um, but, yeah... So yeah, they. So Sudenberg's weird now because they've put like, so Vogmar's here, but like, like where the hell's Sudenberg? I guess it's underneath there, but yeah, I don't know. What's the um? Oh, land of the dervishes, right? It's not. I thought the province was called Sudenberg, right? So it's the land of the dervishes. Yeah, right. So it's it's like north. It sort of goes north south, like it's. No, oh, can't really. Oh, you can zoom in more. Yeah, so the land of the dervishes is just here. So in in mortal in in mortal empires it sort of go it's a it kind of goes horizontally across the bottom of the map, but in like this one it sort of goes north south kind of like that along the coast. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, um, favorite move? Yeah, probably. Well, Voltmar's the the main most significant one that's been announced so far. I would say, um, and rest of the empires in the same place. The um, oh, Lithanar has been moved up to here. Um, somebody actually found that there was a, a note saying that a lot of people don't like Alithanar's move and um, that CA have acknowledged that that and have said that there's a chance that they'll be looking at removing some of these factions later on down the road. Um, they didn't specifically they didn't specifically confirm they were going to move Alithanar, but the, the comment said something along the lines of, you know, we've heard that a lot of people don't like the Lithanar start position and we're, you know, reviewing whether we might change some of them later on or something along those lines. Um, but yeah, um, but yeah, the Lithanar one, I don't know. I don't really care. It's fine. Whatever. I can still migrate back to, back to Ulth one. It's just a bit harder now. Um, uh, Bretonia. Bretonia is not really one of my favorite factions, but I've got a good, I've got high hopes that Bretonia is going to get a DLC that's going to give him like one or two extra hero types, a couple of extra lords, some more interesting units. And Bretonia, like I feel like Bretonia could one day become one of my favorite factions if they fill out, if they just give him heaps more stuff. Like I like the vibe of the general like knights and filthy peasants and all that, you know, vibe of Bretonia. I just don't like. Yeah, just they don't have enough heroes, basically, is, like, the main thing for me. I feel like they needed, like, a Robin Hood hero and maybe a Battle Priest, a Battle Priest uh, Pilgrim hero or something like that. Um, yeah, Skaven, I don't really care about. Um, 
Yeah, a techless moving down here is kind of interesting, I guess. Desert High Elves would be cool. Yeah, no, none of the, none of the moves that have been shown off so far are really like my favorite or that I'm super excited about. I'm hyped for Hero Vlad Isabella. Yeah, I'm hyped for Hero Vlad Isabella as well. But they didn't actually move. I'm pretty sure Hero Vlad and Isabella are still staying in the same start position in um in Sylvania. But Manfred's moved. Apparently, Manfred's going to be down here in the Southlands. This Southlands area is going to be so crazy. So many factions in there fighting it out. It's already looking pretty hectic, isn't it? Um, I still think Lustria is still going to be a shithole and I won't, don't want to hang out in. Um, I don't like the movement problems that you have in Lustria and stuff like that. I still think Empire is still going to be my favorite faction, favorite location. I just love how close together all the settlements are. I love how tight it is with all the different rivers and roads and forests and stuff like that. It's, yeah, like it's tight and small, but it's like um, densely packed with stuff and the move and your movement is good. Like you can move far in Empire from because they've got good roads. So it's just, I don't know. I think like the old world is like the perfect place really. Like, yeah, I always like to be there unless I'm near Ulthwine, in which case Ulthwine's pretty good too. But yeah, like, Nagarond, everything's too kind of spread out. It's not as good. Ulthuan, I mean, Lustria is really bad because it's got that crappy forest movement and stuff. Um, Southlands is okay, but yeah, it's a bit too spread out still, I reckon. Um, and all the mountainous regions are annoying unless you got underway stuff, yeah. But yeah, anyway, um, kind of getting off topic a little bit here. Uh, what was the other question? I recommend using lock formations to avoid colliding chariots with each other and only charging the last 20 meters. Yeah, that's a good idea, Dash Dash. Um, although what I usually like to do is just control all of the chariots individually and make them charge in from different directions. But yeah, often you don't have time to fuck around with that sort of stuff. And yeah, I can see using lock formation would be pretty good. But I don't know, like I thought with lock formation, they still will target the center of the unit once they actually get into charge mode. Um, but I'll have to try it out and see if it actually works. If you want them to charge into different um, different units, then it would, would work. But if they all target the same unit, I thought they'd still target the center. It's tight and small, I see. Nah, uh, what are you are you trying to read into it? Look at Grimgore. Look at the Grimgore location. Doesn't it seem perfect for taking over the world? Ah, uh, just in the middle of the map. Yeah, it's pretty uh pretty good. Grimgore is pretty like doesn't have very many enemies up there, does he? He's pretty uh in a pretty cool spot with his back to the chaos world. Should have put corn up by Clan Mulder. Mm, well, Warriors of Chaos are going to be up there. So yeah, Warriors of Chaos will be up there around near Clan Mulder and, and, and um, Grimgore soon. They'll have, you know, they'll have, they'll be occupied. Ah, uh, I'm just so excited about the whole map and everything like Immortal Empires. Everything in Immortal Empires is super exciting. Got all my jars. Uh, just, what's uh, what's this one again? Oh yeah, Unbreakable. Hmm. Is Unbreakable really good for Undead? Because it stops them from crumbling? Or does it not quite work that way? I can't remember. Hey, Ready Ash. Baby hype? It's, are you like promoting Planned Parenthood or something? No, no, not Planned Parenthood. What is it? Just Parenthood, I guess. Summon them. Where will the dwarves be, the normal ones? Baby hype for IE? What do you mean, like, you're like a, a little bit of hype, not a lot of hype? Is that what you're saying? It does stop crumbling. Oh, thanks, Andrew Twice. Yeah, cool. Because, yeah, normally on your Unbreakable, you can't crumble, but I wasn't sure if, like, if you're already crumbling and then you cast it. Well, actually, yeah, does it. Can you cast it after? Oh, no, right. Yeah, this is what Dash Dash is talking about. As good as, as good as long as you can use it before you start crumbling. Yeah, that's what I was. Yeah, that's what I was wondering about, whether it worked. If you start it before they start crumbling. Okay, cool, cool. Okay, you ready now? She's um she's burnt been burnt before. She doesn't wanna doesn't wanna open herself up to too much hype. I can understand that. You wanna make yourself vulnerable. I'm gonna I'm gonna approach it with an open heart though. I'm gonna be like, fuck yeah. Immortal Empires is gonna be the greatest thing in the history of the world. I'm not I'm not having any um I'm not reducing my expectations even the slightest. I'm like having maximum expectations. Best thing ever. That's that's my expectation. Rise. 
wonder if we can get scouting on this um, stack over here. Hmm. Well, well, from what we can see, it doesn't look too scary. Um, we've got a really shit army, though. Hmm. It will be the best Immortal Empires made for Total War Warhammer 3. <laughs> Grimwald's like narrowing down the narrowing it down. I am bra I am brave. Yes, you've got to be you got to be brave. You got to wear your heart on your sleeve. You got to represent. You got to say what you mean and mean what you say and all that kind of stuff. Attend your king, slaves. All right. Submit to your king. I guess we have enough buffing around for this turn. Hey, I want yeah, I want this six percent health. Give it to me. Finally took the Black Pyramid. No, I never took the Black Pyramid. It's just sitting here, defending my eastern uh, eastern boundaries there. One turn to we get another Cask of the Souls. Nice. Um, all right. I bet they'll buff Cetra in Wemo 3. He's surrounded. You mean buff the AI Cetra for auto resolve? Maybe. I'll hmm, have we got what sort of lords have we got? Um Yeah, fuck it, alright, we'll get rid of that. So is that is that death blow um is that death blow follower good for um the tomb guard? Death blow if they get below twenty percent health they get eighteen percent. Oh, is the death blow I actually yeah, I never I, I always thought that the death blow ability was like per model. So like if the mo if the actual individual model gets below twenty percent health, then they get the extra damage. But is is that like per unit? Does anyone know how death blow works? Is it from the unit or from the for the model? Like because you know each each model's got like seventy hit points, 70, 70 health or whatever. So if you like if a if a inf if an individual infantryman takes a hit and gets down below twenty percent health, but he doesn't die, uh, it's per unit, not per model. Uh, okay. Well, that sucks then. Because if they get below 20% health, they're probably going to crumble and die. Oh, well, at least they do a bit more damage before they die, I guess. Um, I suppose because their stats go up, they've slightly got a chance of getting, like, um, you know, less morale penalties and stopping the crumble, but pretty unlikely. I think if anything gets down below 20%, it's pretty much fucked. I'm dead, so. My dynasty reigns supreme. I wonder what Arkan's army is going to do down here. Don't know how you can really get hyped by the start of this piece of shit drip feed, but... Um... I always... I've been hyped for Immortal Empires since they announced Warhammer 1, bro. This it's, 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 is what it's always been about the whole time. Hype, the hype never left. It was always there. Like with the guy with the pistol. Uh, P oh, P start pause. I thought you meant start, like, the start of the, um, start of the drip feed. And POS was a piece of shit, but start position, right. Sorry. I mis- I misread your- I- I read there as being a bit more negativity there than there was. Uh, so can I not get vision on these? What about if I do an uh, action on them? No. Sucks. Hmm. Hmm. 
Messi's true thoughts leaked out. No, no, I just thought that was what I was, what I was saying. No, I mean, if you had have asked me about what if, like, if you had have described them just telling us about the start positions once a day per day for like every day for two weeks or whatever, I would have thought, oh, that sounds really annoying and frustrating and, and stuff like that. But, um, and I did, like, I felt like, I felt a little bit like that with some of the previous, um, kind of pipe train jobs that they did. But, um, but yeah, no, I've been I've been kind of liking the start position one because it's like, it's there's not high expectations, you know. Like I think that it was really with Woma three, it was really frustrating me because they would keep they would keep saying, oh, there's big news coming out in three days. There's big news coming out in four days, or we've got something really special. We're going to show you at the end of the week, and and then it was just a video of like three kingdoms, uh, just a a video of like Cathay fighting against Zeech or some shit, you know, with no actual information, mostly just units we've already seen, you know, you know what I mean? Like that was frustrating because they kept like saying, oh, it's going to be something exciting. And then it was just not exciting, you know? Um, but this time I feel like I'm actually enjoying it a lot more because it's just, or you know that all that's coming out tomorrow is this new start position. So your expectations are really low, but then quite often then they, the start positions comes out and it's actually kind of, interesting you know a little bit or it makes you think oh i wonder what that's going to be like and you know it's kind of fun so i don't know i've been actually kind of not minding it just i guess like because i'm because i've got the youtube channel like it, it was just a bit with yeah with the with the Wema 3 stuff it was a bit frustrating because you don't you never it's hard to plan it's hard to plan your content, you know, it's hard to plan what you're going to do. So it's like, if I was going to do a stream and then they announced some news, um, that was coming out that day, then I'd be like, oh, okay, we'll I have to cover that news. Even though I was planning on doing a stream about something totally different. And then I would cover the news, but then it was like, then it would be like not hardly any excitement. It's like not very exciting information, you know? So that was a bit frustrating, but I'm finding this is actually kind of fun. I'm digging it. Um, should we fight this battle just, you know, just cause? Probably not. This is too easy. Yeah, I probably could have done better than that, but come on. The big fat emptiness around Cathay, Cathay intrigues people. Indeed. My. Uh, I suppose we should go to this lord here, just to... Uh... <laughs> just get another chance to get some more followers and, um... Defeat is impossible. Magic items, perhaps? No. Yeah, the, the low magic item drop chance on um, Toon Kings, you really notice it. You just guy, you hardly get any magic items for them. Victory in undeath. Uh, I don't know if I should go growth or public order here. What is the public order like anyway? Um, oh, we can always just go public order here anyway. All right, Arcan's pretty um, pretty screwed. I'm gonna drown in magic order items with the mortal, immortal empires with tomb kings with cheap mortuary cult item. Spam plus item fusing. Yeah, item fusing combined with dwarfs and um, tomb kings is going to be really interesting. I always thought the tomb kings was the empire before the empire. Is that accurate, Uh No. The tomb kings are nothing to do with the empire. The tomb kings are the Kemri, the old Kemri empire, I believe. Um, they're like, you know, basically like the Egyptians of the, of the Woma world. They're nothing to do with like Karl Franz's empire faction. That's what you mean. Attend. 
All right. Well, if we get rid of that, submit to your king. Serve me, Tomb King of Nehekara. I'm awake. They defy the mortuary calls. All right, let's uh, see if we can join our join our mighty armies together. Um, and we want. That's way too many units, isn't it? Um. Something like that, maybe. So we've got four, six units of infantry, three units of archers. Yeah, that seems pretty good. In time, we move. And then this is just like a crap stack, basically. some more items up his impness Get some more trustworthy. We'll keep farming for trustworthy. We'll also get more jars now that we've got our. Um... Oh, we got a level six treacherous. Ah, it's okay. We've... I'll, I'll recruit him, but yeah, we won't necessarily re replace him. So, yeah, so while we've got the um, while we've got the buff to Lord recruit rank, we can create some more jar jar spam. Address me as. Off on me, <clears throat> Knowledgeable, nice. All right, we'll get rid of this guy. Finally, got another caster. And we'll give him. Can these guys equip the follower that makes the... Oh yeah, this one. You know it's been heavily overlooked for one of three races, none of them have Lord Recruit rank buildings, and that's been in the game since super early in the one of two life cycle. Uh, okay, yeah. Priest King. Alright. This is all uh, going pretty well. I have concerns that they're removing it for Immortal Empires. 
Oh, you reckon they're gonna remove, um... You reckon they're gonna remove it for other factions as well? Just, they wanna get rid of that Lord Recruit rank thing? I wish, uh, what I wish they would do is get rid of the unit recruit rank. I hate unit recruit rank stuff. Like, um... Yeah, I really like it when you get your, when you get your, um... Units at low level, and then you have to work at keeping them alive to let them level up and slowly get more, um... Efficiency or whatever. Um, and yeah, I think like, and it, it feels really satisfying when you get a unit that gets manages to get up to, you know, silver chevrons and then eventually gold chevrons, you know, and, and if you can get like recruit, recruit rank bonus, um, stuff that makes you, you just come out with, um, nine, uh, rank nine, like with three gold chevrons, it's just like, it just, it just destroys that feeling of, like your guys living real living guys that have you know become veterans over time and stuff like that um yeah i feel like like you know you play warriors of chaos and all of your chosen come out like rank three already and then the the guy that like that the chosen um how with halberds and the chosen that you start off with at the start of the campaign like they're still only like you know it's got silver chevrons or whatever and they're just random newbie ones that you're making are already popping out with gold chevrons it just really like makes it really like yeah it makes it really feel really shit um it's nothing to do with how powerful they are in game or anything like that it's just purely the, the like role play immersion factor i feel like it just there's something about it's it sort of goes back to almost like in like medieval 2 how you know you had the you could actually build your guys with um like bronze armor and silver armor and gold weapons and stuff like that and you would see on the actual models that have the different armor and it just made it just gave you more than more of a connection to the to the unit because you know you're they were like sort of special i guess and that's and that's a little thing that, Sh that chevrons does it makes every unit a little bit special just in that experience that they've got but as soon as you have units having recruit rank um so they start off with chevrons it just destroys that you know and so yeah i really wish they would get rid of that or at least cap it like i feel like you shouldn't be able to have like recruit rank above like three chevrons they should just have it like hard coded into the game that no unit can ever be recruited with higher than rank three um unless their regiments are renowned that are locked as um, rank nine already that's just like one of my little you know chevrons i think chevrons are always pretty impactful with well no not always but they're they're usually pretty impactful with most units but um a lot of times the units are not that impactful you know what i mean like if you have empire spearmen or you have like rank nine empire spearmen like they're not gonna it's not gonna make much difference because empire spearmen just are not that impactful you know as units um i might take this just so we don't have to worry about getting backstabbed by these guys later on Um, we're going to need to have a new enemy pretty soon. This is my land. Submit. We can, I'm sort of thinking either we go for Ikat Claw so that we can keep farming his trait with technology or we go for um, or we go for um, start going for the um, books. We should probably start going for the books really. Oh, I've got military access. I could go over here and get my cheap buildings. My dynasty reigns supreme. We never tire. Petra watches. My glory. I forbid this. Citra rules. What? My servant fails me. Someone this army should be able to smash that army without taking much damage, yeah? This is forbidden. Legion 
Kings rise! Priest King of Greatest Dynasty. Legions move! Some yeah. more, uh, more jaws. Just declare a war on any of the book factions and wait for them to come to you, and then get get screwed by the tons of elite stacks flooding you as they activate. Ah, wouldn't it be easier just to like move out into their territory with all my lords and then just instantly kill them? Oh, we can actually get in range of the settlement. Uh, no, we can't quite. Boom, King of Mehikara. Shinkan. It's tier two. I don't really want to take it, but it's not a great deal we can do about it. All right, let's have a look at these books. Maybe we should actually make... I haven't, still haven't gotten a single book, even the one that started off right next to me. I just never bothered to get it. So I guess we should go for that one and get some Shadow Priests. It'd be good if you got plus one capacity as well. So this one I've got to defeat, defeat that Lord's army. This one I've got to take that... Take that army... Yeah, this one over here is the one I want. Plus one capacity for all heroes. What? Yeah, should I do that? Declare war on these guys? Or will it be too hectic? Plus 20 wins book next door. I didn't ignore it. It's just that it's um a powerful army and I didn't really have the strength to do it. I can probably do it anytime I want now though. but um so where is he oh he's over here right oh that's in there right oh shit I wanted to he's yeah okay I really want to see him over there Alright. 
It's literally does not swerve. Indeed. Uh, Nicolanda usually has a few Stegodons, send a couple of armies. I was just gonna send like all of the armies. Don't fuck around. My armies roll in teams of four. Oh, see you, Sushi. I didn't see you say goodbye. That was probably ages ago now. There's like so much text in chat. I can't like read it all. Just write at most of the mad if you're trying to talk to me because I um, might not see it. There's like a lot of chat going on there. Is the stream name an apocalypse reference or some slang thing? What is the stream name? I don't remember what I named the stream. Cetra does not swerve. How's that a ch how's that an apocalypse now reference? You'll have to explain that one, Jacob. It's um, it's just a play on uh, Cetra does not serve Cetra rules, uh, which is what he said apparently when the um, the Chaos Gods tried to try to bend him to their will. Except in this case, it means that um, he runs over people with his chariot. The king moves. King of kings. Nehekara rises from the sands. Nehekara rises from the sands. Charlie does not surf. Oh, okay. Nah, it's not. It's not. Nah, it's, a, it's a reference to um, Citra does not surf. Citra, Citra does not surf. This is like Citra's. Actually, if we take over this, so this is currently going to cost me 2,000 gold, but as soon as we take over this, we'll be in the same province, and then our Necrotex will make it free. So we'll do that. Of to war for Nehekara. That should be the end of the in my name. Yep, cool. He's done. And now if we try and build some infrastructure, cost is zero. Boom, done. Um let's grab that as well. I do not lose. The public order back on. Um actually Cetra said it in response to Nagash's polite offer to serve him. Uh, didn't I thought he said the same thing to the Chaos Gods as well in the end times. Immortal Empire soon? Yeah, Immortal Empire is not too far away. Uh, Citra always ends up serving in my Tomb King campaigns. Recruit, it, recruit defeat legendary lords is my one must-have mod. Ah, uh, okay. Um, yeah, playing on legendary very hard. Just, just normal, normal difficulty. Is victorious. Bow before your king. Um, yeah, the campaign's. I think the campaign's starting to get, you know, a bit more cruisy now. I know. Does, uh, I suppose uh, I'm probably not like, probably not completely safe because I haven't really run into any of the other mega blobs. But I doubt. 
I, I don't know for sure, but I suspect this ca this campaign is just going to be like super easy from now on. But I don't know. We shall see. Maybe I'll be maybe I'll be uh, unpleasantly surprised. Actually, I don't, I don't even worry about it. I might just turn off this uh, unassigned skill points and just not worry about it for now. You can just do batch My lots every now and again. Where is this? We... Oh, we'll keep, uh, yeah, we'll just keep recruiting more skeletons, I reckon. From the sands. More archers, right? Oh, nice, we got more team scorpions. I need more. Traversing. Is he? No, he's not stationary. Where is he? Fucker. Did he move to the Pyramid of Nagash? Is that in there? Oh no, this is. No, that's not in there. I feel like this ping is not is just there. It's not the it's not the pyramids next to it. Maybe his army's camped next to it. More canopic jars. More yeah, for sure. We have to replace this guy. More jars. How many more turns we got left? Still more three more turns. That is Nicolando, yeah, nice. Find my harm. All About declaring wars, yeah. I'm thinking about declaring war on the faction that's over in um, Lostria, so you get them to come over here. But um, hey, Dark, thanks for um, subscribing, much appreciated, man. Um, but um, that might be a, it's probably a really bad idea. I want to get some more of those movement followers, but they're really hard to get. I'm, uh, I see. I think I feel like I should declare war on these orcs, but they're really they've been really useful allies because they they seem super aggressive and they just seem to like, yeah, they seem to have been really handy to help me help me every step of the way. Oh, I should have built this before I moved away. Now I'm gonna have to pay for it. Never trust a pirate roaming faction, you'll regret leaving them behind. Yeah. Mr. Mad, what's your favorite canopic jar investment? Oh, I don't I don't know, Ogre. I'm a I'm a total noob for uh, Tomb Kings. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I'm just uh, people are just telling me what to do basically. And this is only like my this is basically my first real campaign with Tomb Kings. I mean, I know like I know I probably know quite a lot about uh, about Tomb Kings um, from you know conversations I've had about them and 
um, you know, watching Legend of Total War streams and stuff like that. But I've never, I never really got into them myself. I never really gave them a good go, I guess. And I never really like kind of learned them properly. So, um, so yeah, for me, it's all just sort of theoretical. Um, where's that lone Necrotech hero that I had before? Oh, there is. I need more. Um, but yeah, no, I need to, um, need you guys to, um, give me some suggestions. I'll have a look at it in a sec. Where's that, where's that book dude gone? He's running from me. Stop running. Should have cut across here. You never have too many canopic jars? No, indeed. Greatness comes. He will serve. I wonder if they're gonna fix the jars uh, the jar cheese. Imagine if they get rid of all of the um Imagine if they get rid of all of the cheese for uh, Tomb Kings. Legend of a fucking rage. Until <laughs> loses shit. The visible in the fog is the blue shiny thing. Yeah, no, I, I, I knew that. I just, it's a, it's a bit subtle though, you know. Sometimes it's hard to notice it. I ignore the. You don't want to have to search, so I just click on the thing, so it goes straight to it. If they get rid of I love jars, I won't play Tomb Kings anymore. Yeah, I know. I can't imagine like, like, yeah. I could if you didn't have any of the cheeses, I wouldn't want to play Tomb Kings at all. I don't think. Like, I just yeah, nah. Like the thing that makes them good to play is that is all of the cheese that you can do with them. Um, without that, they just wouldn't feel very dynamic and powerful. I don't think. Attend your king, slaves. All right. No, we go. King Lilo needs to get some more tuna, needs to get some more scoop, scorpions in there. Moving. Um. I guess we'll... Go like so. Next time we move, I'm awake. My dynasty reigns supreme. Um, where are we now? We're in Al Haik. Suppose we can Maybe you should run over to this camera you got. Uh yeah, they got like three different things that they could upgrade. Um well you can nip over to Kemri. Upgrade all of our infrastructure for free. So we've got our Necrotech Channel Valley Necrotechs. All uh, maxed out. Should we get more archers or more shabti? Public order? We don't need, no, we don't need any public order. Walls. Mm. You can. You can one a Shapti or four archers is better. Always barracks in the tier three towns. Oh, you reckon? Oh, get um, because we can get yeah, because then you can get archers and we can get tomb guard as well. Yeah, cool, cool, good cool. Yeah, thanks, Dash Dash. That sounds like good advice. And yeah, we'll come down and um, level up all this stuff once we. Get down there. Our income's starting to get fairly decent. Cut out 
rises from the sands. Submit to your king. Hmm. The only thing is we've got no no good no forces over here, but I'm still thinking we put Sorcerer's Islands back up to tier three and then build walls there. Do you reckon, I don't know, do you reckon if something invades from here they're going to go to Sorcerer's Island or are they just going to come straight into... Actually this is, oh wow, you can't land on any of this coast. Like, all out to Lashek. That's pretty cool. You can probably land on Sorcerer's Island and then come in through there though. So this is actually pretty solid. That's pretty cool actually. So like none of this is beach. Can't land anywhere south of Lashik except for if you come through Sorcerer's Island. So that's pretty good. It's pretty defensive. I'm liking that. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually liking this area. I don't think I mean I wouldn't say I like it as much as Empire. It's definitely better than Lustria though. Lustria sucks. It's definitely better than Boganistan over here where um where in where um Imrik starts. It's not too bad. I'd say like yeah, Kemri start area might be like you know, my third tier. Like, probably, yeah, probably like it better than Nagarond. Nagarond's okay, but it's a bit not, yeah, I don't know. If anything invades, they go straight for Sorcerer's Island. Ah, uh, okay. So, yeah, so you're getting tier three there would probably be a good idea. But we need some, um, we need some uh, access with armies as well. Diplomatic with my attention. Um, probably I might go the growth and the minus 10 because I don't reckon the minus 10 is going to hurt us because we've got plus 45 with all factions anyway because of our trustworthy lords and heroes. What is that we just got then? Oh, the right expired. Damn, I was going to hire all the little remaining lords in the pool so they could get extra, um... Get extra, um... Oh, should I build dyes? Do I have dyes? We do not have dyes. I assume we need dyes for something. I might just build money there. I'll get dyes later. Oh yeah, so we're going to look at the thing. Um, so... Bound spell banishment? Fuck, that's alright. Two uses of banishment. Shit, we need to get some of this stuff. <laughs> Imagine having every hero having two units of banishment. That's pretty good. Um, what else we got on here? A bit of poison's always nice. The hunger. That'll be good. Hunger on a weapon. That's really nice, actually. You get regeneration on a weapon. We can we need we need to get some marble. Well, that's pretty close. Yeah, I'd really like to get all of my tomb princes with um the hunger. Sadly, the purple items are bugged and can only be crafted once. How's it a bug? That's intended, isn't it? Because the dwarf's purple items can only be crafted once as well. Purple items are meant to be unique, right? They're only meant to be able to craft them once. Oh, that's a really nice little like one-shot healing potion. That's cheap as well. Hmm. Maybe we should grab a couple of those. 
You need the blue regeneration armor. It's very good. Yeah, regeneration armor sounds good. This one, ward save. Oh yeah, ward save. Nice. Just need iron. Oh, iron's right here. We've got iron. We could have iron. Yeah, move. Get rid of that. We'll put growth there. Or maybe we should just put the iron, get the iron straight away. Or maybe I should abandon it and let the dwarves take it. And then just trade with them. Oh yeah, we can knit T3 Nicker. Uh, yeah, this is this is um, available as soon as we get the money. Uh, I don't know what you mean. It's But, um, but yeah, none of the purple items can be made multiple times for the dwarfs either. Yeah, maybe it's it, maybe it's just got the same tooltip as all the rest of the buttons, but they forgot to make a different one for it or something. Twenty four, so we got five. He's dodging me. He's evading me. Right. If we necrotech now, summon up my faction leader. Ugh. I'm always like tempted to run back to get him closer. I'm just worried when the when you abandon a settlement, it happens. Does the abandoning happens at the end of the end turn, right? So these guys won't have an opportunity to steal it off me because it'll happen after their movement. Pretty sure. Ah, uh, it doesn't really matter, I suppose. You just pop it here. But it takes a couple extra turns. This one. The bandit is the start. Of yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so they won't have an opportunity to steal it. Basically, is what I'm saying. Um, so we can get there in three turns. Yeah. So we'll just do that. Oh shit! That's the wrong. Fuck! I've done that a few times now. Like I was not trying to do that with. Get with uh with him. I was trying to do it with him. So if I can just restart. This is a this is a science stream, by the way, guys, because uh, this is my first time having a serious Tomb Kings campaign. So I said at the start that I was gonna you know restart if necessary to try things out and uh, you know reload and stuff like that. We actually haven't done any reloads apart from uh well the only reload I've done this is the second time I've done this reload at the start of a turn because I fucked up my movement but um I haven't actually done any restarts or um or uh alt f4s or anything like that but I did leave it on the table that if we needed to do some alt f4ing or restarting in order to you know 
learn for educational purposes in order to learn the game better i was going to do it so yeah just in case uh yeah for those of you who are new to the channel i've got i've got like like three basically like three different kind of ways that i play science streams which is what we're doing right now is basically where i've acknowledged that i'm a noob and i don't know what i'm doing and so i just um so if i need to like cheat a little bit to practice to try stuff out or whatever then that's fine then i've got like then you've got like challenge campaigns and challenge campaigns obviously you can't do anything that's like cheating whatever the rules of the challenge are you've got to adhere to that strictly otherwise it completely negates the challenge um, and then i've got my like kind of ultimate campaigns or like immersive campaigns or whatever you want to call it like campaigns where i'm playing it for fun um and i want to just really enjoy whatever it is everything about the campaign um and in those ones as well it's like you don't really want to cheat do you don't want to do anything that you personally feel like is cheating because it kind of can taint your campaign and ruin your enjoyment of it that's that's my take on it but anyway but anyway even though technically this was supposed to be like a sciencey stream uh we're, we're not really i'm playing more for fun than for anything else i think at this point uh do we want money or do we want we want, probably want growth or public order really <clears throat> What do you think of the new Southlands Bowl so far? Well, yeah, I'm actually kind of interested in it. I didn't really care before, but now that I like, I kind of like Tomb Kings now, I'm like, maybe I do care now. Um, maybe I'll just have, actually have a kind of a quick look at it. I hadn't actually thought about it from the point of view of me playing it. Like, basically, like basically my thought about Southlands was just like, oh yeah, I don't care about Southlands. That was pretty much my thought about it. I just didn't give a shit about any of this. But now I'm kind of really actually enjoying um, playing as Tomb Kings. So I'm thinking like for me, the relevance would be me playing as Cetra or me playing as Arkan the Black maybe. And then looking at this as like my new, my new playground of where I could conquer. Southland Bowl either implies Araby DLC, new focus on the area or shuts down Araby completely because there's no space. <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, doesn't necessarily mean anything, I guess. Empire and Britannia are teaming up to invade Lustria now. Um, yeah, true. Vault Mercy is down here, yeah. But I don't know. But like, if I'm playing Empire, I don't want to play Empire in the Southlands. It doesn't matter how good the Southlands is; it's still clearly inferior to the Old World. But I'm like, I'm now like, I'm not like, I'm like, it's not like Tomb Kings is my new favorite, and like, I want to live in the Southlands now. But it's like the Southlands has moved into a solid. I think the Southlands is moving into a solid third place. So it'd be like Empire, Ulthuan, and then Southlands is like my third favorite area, you know. But it's a lot, but it's like Old World is like definitely 100% my favorite area. Way less favorite than that is Ulthuan. And then way less favorite than Ulthuan is Southlands. And then everything, everywhere else really sucks, basically. That's my opinion. But Southlands is like, yeah, I'm coming around to not completely sucking. It's kind of all right. But I wouldn't really, really want to play Volkmar here, I don't think. I'd rather probably, if I was going to play Volkmar, I'd probably rather migrate him back to the Empire still. But I suppose with his chasing the books mechanic, you aren't really going to be able to do that. You're going to have to keep him on Crusade. But maybe what you could do is like abandon his territory and just, or, you know, not worry too much about his territory. Confederate your base back into Empire again, and that's where your economic base is. But then kills still keep crusading around with um, Volkmar. If you if you if you can make a hero doom stack, then um then Volkmar can just keep cruising from here probably. But yeah, there's gonna be quite a high density of good defeat traits in the Southland. Yeah, having access to Tic Tac Toe is a nice one, a nice one with Pacetro as well. Um it's hard to really make much sense of the map from this, like because the map's all twisted around and different to what it is in um a model at Mortal Empires. So you don't really have much of an idea of what you know what it's going to be like exactly but um it's it there's a few things that are interesting like i like the um croc guards start now because in the old one croc guards right in the corner with like some a bunch of coastline that he can't actually 
get off like all of all of Krokgar's coastline is like inaccessible basically except for the part where the settlement is I think um and then he can only go west basically whereas here he's got like coastline he can go north and he can go south so he's got like and, oh, and he's got access to the mountains as well I guess um so yeah Krokgar's starts heaps more dynamic and interesting now which is pretty cool um this so like just look at the scale of it like it's just so many possibilities like even like techless like imagine playing as techless down in this like savage you know savage um land um you know far from civilization and stuff like imagine this is your new start position you start as techless on the fucking southwestern edge of the world surrounded by jungle and you know savage beasts it's the forces of zeech it's just i don't know just i don't know i don't know if i'm explaining it very well but just that excitement of like a new start position like in a different part of the world and it's not even a different part of the world it's a different world you know like this is it's not just his star position it's like a whole new world to to find you know it's crazy Kairos is the safest yeah Kairos's star position looks pretty safe doesn't it it looks worryingly much like vortex not africa why is that a worry I mean, yeah, the I think that um, the Southlands is a lot smaller than it's supposed to be in the lore. Like, I think the old world's supposed to be fairly small, and Southlands supposed to be fairly big. But, um, but I think I think in terms of playable area, um, you know, it's it's fine. Like, I think this scale is actually not bad in, because, like, my interest, you know, my interest in the Southlands and the Lost Area is much less than the old world. But and like the amount of factions that are there and stuff, you know um yeah anyway so come back to the original question yeah i think i like the idea of this southlands becoming like southland southland seems to have become like a more of a premier location now you know like lustre is still a shithole on the edge of the world you know that no one really wants to go to same with nagarond kind of you know um but lustre is like i mean uh, southlands is kind of you know kind of pretty cool now it's kind of in the middle of a bunch of stuff and um it's yeah it's it's kind of cool. I'm digging it. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm uh, sorry to th thanks so much for everyone who came over from Legend Stream. I uh, really appreciate it. Thanks for all the people who subscribed. I noticed like a bunch of people subscribed and um. And I've uh, got a new new member today, actually. Oh, yeah, I was uh, I should have done a rename in honor of our new member. I don't know if he's still here. Um, I'll uh, I'll uh, name one of our generals after you uh, if I can if I can find you. So I got a bit busy and I got a bit carried away, but yeah, I definitely uh, check a rename. <laughs> Um, our newest member is Angry Dyatlov. Nice. Um, and Angry is Angry Dyatlov. Such an imperishable. No, not him. Submit. King Dehuti. Submit King Amrose. Uh, yeah, King Dehuti. He's got the better army. Alright, so he's now going to be King Dyatlov, the Angered. Still there? Oh, nice. <laughs> uh, thanks a lot for becoming a member, man. I really appreciate the support. And uh, we've named, we've renamed King Dyatlov, the Angered, in your honor. He will uh, crush many, uh, crush many uh, infidels in the uh, in the desert sands. But um, but yeah, I've um, yeah, I didn't get any sleep last night, guys. And I guess I'm technically I'm supposed to start work in an hour. But um, I'm probably going to start late, but I, I might just try and get an extra extra bit of sleep and finish the stream early. So, yeah, so thanks so much for everyone who came over from Legend Stream. Thanks, Angry, for becoming a new member of the channel. That's awesome. And, um, and uh, yeah, and thanks to Legend for the host. I really appreciate it. But, um, but I um, yeah, I'm going to have to cut it short. I'm sorry. I normally stream for about an hour longer than this, but lately I've been kind of finishing early a little bit to get a bit of extra sleep as needed. Uh, I'll just quickly... 
see if there's anyone streaming so we can chuck a host over to somebody thanks so oh yeah thanks to um radio nash for the host as well um really appreciate it radio nash is a is a is a uh, cool uh another cool person in the total war community um uh, what am i doing i'm trying to find other people playing total war right Um, and yeah, thanks for everyone for the help with the tomb, learning the Tomb Kings. I'm, uh, I'm loving them now. I definitely I want to play some more Tomb Kings. I'd almost tempted to play another Tomb Kings back to back and just straight away going to another one. But um, but yeah, I, um, but I probably should mix it up. So maybe we'll play Dwarfs next or something like that. But um, I reckon I'll come back for some um, for some Ark and Black pretty soon after that. Yeah, yeah. I'm just a, I'm done a host or anything. Thanks, Tim Twice. Yeah. Um, yeah, so if you guys want to hang around just for a little bit longer, I'm about to end the stream, but I'm going to um, put up a redirect. So you'll see um, you'll see a little pop-up that'll uh, prompt you to click on it and then um, take you to Srini's, um, Srini's uh, stream. I think Srini is... Um, he's actually got... He's, I, keep it, I keep saying he's got like... A, his channel's really small, but he's actually got a fair few... He's got like 5,000 subscribers, so he's actually got a pretty big... Um, He's getting pretty big now. Um, and he's also one of um, Legend of Total War's moderators, I believe. So probably a lot of you guys would probably already know him, Shrini510. Um, anyway, I'm going to end the stream. Go check out Shrini. He's playing um, Fallen Enchantress. Um, a little pop-up should pop up in a second. Uh, thanks, everyone. Have a good day. I'm going to go get some sleep.